Hey, and we are back with another episode of the Grumpy Guy BJJ Podcast. I'm your co-host James Wilson here with my buddy Rob Eikhoff. Rob, Yo, what's going? yeah, what's up, James? Good man, good. So a little different setup today. We got our uh, mic set up, so we're actually looking at each other. So it'll be a little more of a regular conversation instead of next to each other, kind of looking at each other sideways. So and half facing the microphone. <laughs> Dude, so now yeah. we shouldn't even have to think about it. Well, now, yeah, exactly. Show. We'll find out though if maybe that was the magic behind the conversation. So what's that? Might be harder staring at each other. <laughs> we we'll get into this alpha. I don't, male. I, I don't know if I can look at you for <laughs> two we're, hours. We're gonna get dude. into this alpha male shit. Who's, who's breaking contact first? By the end of it, man, I know we're gonna be like, I don't know why, man. I thought we should go wrestle. <laughs> I know we're just so. gonna stare at each other for two hours <laughs> and really we'll, dislike each we'll other. See how it goes, I know. <laughs> Anyways, so today we're gonna be digging into. Uh, Beating the Blue Belt Blues, yep. which is another subject that my uh, lovely wife and our assistant, or she's a junior producer now, uh, Kiele, came up with uh, the topic, and she's a good, it's a good resource topic. for topics yeah. these days. Um, so yeah, it's a good topic. I mean, it's uh, one of those, I mean, there's a reason there's a term for it, right? Because it's so common to run into problems, have a lot of people quit at Blue Belt, so you know, I suspect, I mean, obviously we don't, I don't know what your notes look like, but I know mine contain, it's kind of a mix of some, a lot of stuff that we talk about um, already, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of things. It's like, it's really just kind of figuring out how to apply these, these different principles and mindsets and things that we talk about to this specific problem. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I got some notes, I'm ready to dig into it and here at some point so yeah 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 it's yeah I, I think you hit it right on the head when you said that it is going to be a lot of stuff we've talked about but you know as far as applying them to this situation you know and and kind of the way i was thinking about it is i came up with some reasons why i think the quote-unquote blue belt blues happen right and then some solutions to those problems yeah that's kind of the way i thought about it's kind it, of a so. good way to go about it yeah, yeah. it's kind of what i did i yeah. like i said well, what are some of the problems yeah Right, like it goes back to that that Ray Dalio book where he talked about the five step uh, method for solving problem. Like first, you got to identify the damn thing, and then once you've defined what the problem is, then you can start to you know figure out what some potential solutions to it are, and then you can pick from those solutions. But it's funny because so many people, and man, I've I've found this out. Like once I became aware of it, I realized like holy shit, people do this all the time. Like they don't ever really like define the problem they just start looking for solutions to what they think the problem is before they've actually like identified what the problem is and a lot of times when you really like okay here's let's identify the problem first you realize like oh wait a minute like i was kind of going about this the wrong way or maybe thinking about things the wrong way but um yeah it's funny actually our uh, our web guy is notorious for that the guy that helped <laughs> us with our website man and uh he's a great guy he does great work but he'll run into an issue and in, and before he contacts me and we really like identify, okay, here's what I want to make sure happens, blah, blah, blah. He starts coming up with a solution for it. And then he spent like an hour on this solution. And then he's, and then I'm like, well, wait a minute, this isn't going to work because of this. And then he's like, oh shoot. Um, so anyways, I always feel bad when he does that, but it's, yeah, it's funny. People do it in a lot of different areas in life. And now that I know it, man, I see it and I see how people sabotage themselves so badly with it because if you don't know what problem you're trying to solve, like... It's hard to solve it. It's really hard to solve it. You just start taking guesses at stuff and you're like, well, this isn't working. And it's like, well, fuck, how do you even know what you're trying to do? So You know, on that, yeah. you just said that you were basically taking examples of like stuff you learned from that principles book, you know, and how it applies to your life in this situation. You know, like, so I read that book, I finished Anti-Fragile, and I'm on Jordan Peterson's book. Are you? I'm it, reading it again. I just started it, dude. Like, I'm literally, like, 15 pages in. You know the what I mean? Forward. I, yeah, you know, I'm past the forward, and uh, there was a forward, Intro. and then there was another, like, in introduction thing. So you're on the chapter one. And then like, I'm, I'm, Stand like, up straight with your shoulders yes, back. Rule yes. number one. Like, like five pages into that. That's why I tell something. Shiloh, like, don't look like a defeated lobster. That's what I tell her now when I see her, like, with her shoulder slouched and looking down. I go, don't look like a defeated lobster. And immediately she's like... Huh? Like, I don't know. It's funny. Like, instinctively, she kind of like, oh, I don't want to look like a defeated lobster. I'm going to stand up. Even though you have no idea what a defeated lobster <laughs> right. looks like. But instinctively, we yeah. do, which is funny. Anyway, but anyway, so I was getting at like, man, like, the value of reading books like that, dude, it's just priceless. 
like you learn so much shit from that. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't, I mean, I've always kind of read, you know, through different periods of my life, but never, just like the past three or four years, like I've taken it, like I've stepped it up, you know, like I've been reading quite a bit. And I hate to say that I'm like judgmental towards people that don't, but what the fuck are you doing if you're I not? Know. We yeah. have so much access to information. Like, why are you not trying to better yourself? Like, you know, because like if you just spend all your time on social media, you know, all the different fucking venues out there, you're basically just eating junk food all the time for the most yeah. part. You know, instead of you know having a structured diet, you know, a nutrition plan. What are you consuming? What are you consuming? For that, your that's, mind. that's really what it is. So yeah, man, like there's so much good shit to learn from that. You know, like I, that anti fragile book. Like I've seen that, I'm seeing that play out in so many different areas, just with different way people, different the way people behave and the choices they make. And oh, dude, like you see it, yeah. Because you'll see a decision, or you'll have a conversation with somebody, and you'll hear them say something, or you'll see their action, and you totally think, well, man, that's fucking pretty fragile. The yeah. way you know, like, yeah. like I and I never would have thought about that before. So then you start thinking, well, man, their whole fucking foundation is fragile. Yeah. If they're behaving that way, like it's it's not sound. Yeah. So it's interesting. But. And then when fragile things break, man, they really yeah. break. So yeah, yeah it's in, and just that whole concept of the the anti fragile, just how he opened it up was really interesting because something I never really thought about before either is is what is the opposite of fragile? It's not robust. It's right. Not, yeah. It's not strong. It's you know yeah. because those things just indicate that they will resist breaking. And something that's fragile, when you agitate, it breaks. So the opposite of that is when you agitate it, it grows mm -hmm. and improves. And so that's the trick is like, how do you become anti-fragile? Not how do you, you know, become more fragile? And that's where, you know. That's where, where a lot of people screw up. Yeah. The, when, until you think about that is like, you want to be able to benefit from chaos. So to speak. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you can't. Not, you, you can't. You get can't rid be destroyed. You can't get rid of it. No. You can't be destroyed by it. No. And so if you can benefit from it, then yeah. that's that's the anti-fragile yeah. state. You know. So that's what, and yeah. so that's like your goal of jujitsu. You want your jujitsu to be anti-fragile. Yes. You you got to thrive in that chaos. Yeah. Because if you have a set game plan or some set moves, and someone just blows through them, and then yep. you just you're you're you crumble. Yep. Well, your shit was pretty fragile. Well, it's yeah. like the complaint about the IBJJF rules. Like, in all honesty, in some level, it's fragilized the system, right? Like, if you if you came up, you know, competing, especially training to under those rules, well, there was a giant gap in your game called leg locks. You know, like the IBJJF rules are not set up to uh, reward or uh, you know the the those. We've, I mean, we've talked about that before, and so. In, in some ways, it was because this was their view of jujitsu that it's, you know, get the takedown, pass the dangerous legs. Like, that was the system. And so they had created a rule set that fragilized the system in some ways to try to protect, to try to, you know, uh, you know set up that system, that, that view of jujitsu. And then, yeah, man, but once the, it, but now you see, it's like, holy crap, like, it, the people who you're behind the game now if you've spent like you know 10 years training and you haven't trained leg locks up to this point and so uh anyways yeah it's it's interesting you see that all over how but there's but a see, fine the, line man yeah see the old school side of me comes out and i see fragility on the other part people that focus so much on like the leg the leg locks of it what well, i mean the and, rule and set though the, yeah the rules right. i agree with that setting up rules, rules. that kind of protect a certain system right. instead of it letting being a true idea meritocracy, right. uh, I think fragilize the system. But yeah, getting into the personalized stuff. And, and honestly, yeah. it's funny you talk about that because Kevin and I were talking about this last night. He was getting on to me about, he's like, man, you've totally given up trying to pass off your fucking leg locks. He's like, you're yeah. so, you just sit there and you're so stubborn and you're just so controlling with them. You've totally just given up getting up and passing. And I realized like, holy crap, I have. And I've, I've kind of, I've fragilized the system by by getting so focused on one thing, kind of making this rule in my head that like once I got in a you got you in my leg lock funnel, I was not gonna let you out until I finished you. 
And yeah, I started closing my thinking off from other other possibilities. So I was like, fuck, you're absolutely right, man. I totally have. And I know that. I tell people like, man, you know, pass off of them, blah, blah, blah. So, um, but yeah. No, it's funny how, right. e- how easy it is to slip into that and not <clears throat> see it. Yeah. And not realize it. You know, it really is because like just for that example, yeah, so, you know, if someone knows that once they get into your leg lock funnel, like they don't have to worry about you passing. Right. So they can focus a thousand percent of their energy on defending. Right. They're not worried about defending anything else. Nope. They know they just have to, you know, yeah. win, win either the ankle battle or the knee line battle. And when, if you can win that, you're going to be safe. Yeah. You don't have to worry about anything else. So if you start throwing other shit at them, yeah. sprinkling it in so they have to worry, you know, they can't be focused on 100%. But yeah. yeah. It's hard to do, man, because you get lasered in on something and you want it and you're trying to sharpen that sword. You are, yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to do that. Yeah. Like, but the, I, like I say all the time, like you don't know how too far it is until to you've you, gone too yep, far. Yep. And so, like, okay, I've gone too far. It's time to like dial it yeah. back a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like I said, once you know these concepts and you start to see it like everywhere, it changes how you think. Like that's the, <clears throat> like you're saying, um, you know, we have access to so much great information and if all you're doing is surfing the you know the internet on your phone, looking at Facebook or Instagram, and all you watch is fucking Game of Thrones or The Walking Dead or something like that, like yeah, like the information you're putting in your head is is worthless for the most part. It's junk, and you can't. It's really hard to develop evolved thinking it, that way. Like evolution builds on the past, right? and so. You're thinking, you can either like try to accumulate your own experience and let your thinking evolve from your own personal experience, or we have access to, you know, past great thinkers, current great thinkers, you know, we, we can, uh, you know, we can get an idea of their thinking, right? And put it in our head and, and then, and then our thoughts can evolve off of that, like that information, you know, like you were saying, just reading books like anti-fragile and the jordan peterson 12 rules book it, it it gives you bigger better building blocks to start evolving your thinking than you could get on your own right like the proverbial standing on the shoulders of giants like that's the that's the whole point of reading this stuff and man if you're not doing that i just i don't understand it's so it. hard yeah. for your thinking to evolve it's so hard for you to yeah why yeah i don't, I don't understand it either. i don't understand but i know a lot of people are just content they're yeah. comfortable you know we've talked about it before you know and then instead of seeking that discomfort well, you know they're just they're comfortable yeah. in their own little their own little bubble yeah. yeah well that i will say like i i do think i know why and it, it's the same reason that people are resistant to using their notebooks in jujitsu it's because of the industrial school system it has fucked people so many different ways in their mindset and how they think about it like in school why did you read a book you were told to you're told to and what you're going to be tested on it or you had to write a book report on it. So you're reading for a completely different reason. You're not reading because you want to. You're not reading simply for the pleasure of reading or simply for just gathering knowledge that you may or may not recall at some point down the road. Like you, you are, you're, you're reading under pressure, things that you may not necessarily want to read and you're doing it simply because you're going to be tested on it. Man, when you get out of that system, do you want to read more? Mm. Fuck no. Like you, you've been so conditioned. To, to look at reading as this, this you know, a task, this unpleasant task. And, and if you read, because I, I go through this too, it took me a long time to stop reading like I was going to be tested on it. Like, just read through it. And if I get to the end of the book and I can't really remember a whole lot of shit, well, it was just a bad book. You know what I mean? It didn't really speak to me. So, uh, you know, taking that pressure off of yourself helps a lot. But so many people don't because the school system is fucked them over and made them think that reading is this ter- a chore, a chore terrible man. Yeah. yeah but there's so much good stuff to yeah read. yeah yeah i said just like with the notebooks you know people take notes because they think they're gonna have to look back there's gonna be a test down the road and they're gonna have to go back and study these notes so they got to make sure these notes are legible and make sense and are cross-referenced and color-coded and all this other bullshit right and it's like no just get in there and chicken scratch your way through it and if you look back and you're scratching your head like what the fuck was that like it's okay like just know that somewhere i got etched deeper into your brain that was the point of it but yeah man it's like if people don't understand that then it becomes a task and who wants to do that right like that's the thing it's it's changing how you look at it 
it, that's it's actually funny. I was talking to my mom about that this morning, about how like that's human beings' superpower. Our superpower is we can literally change reality, right? Like if somebody cuts you off, you're you're driving on the road, and somebody cuts you off, you're gonna make up a story in your head. One of the way, and then the most common story that people make up is like that fucking asshole. He <laughs> saw me there. He cut me off. That dick. What a fucking dick. You know what I mean? But you don't know that for sure. Maybe the dude didn't see you. Maybe the dude's like trying to get to the hospital quickly because he just found out his wife went into labor and he's and he's a little distracted, right? Well, if you found out that was the case, you'd be like, all right, maybe you should be a little more careful. But you're not mad at him, right? So like, but they're both a story, right? Neither one of them is necessarily true. It's just which one do you choose to tell yourself? How do you view reality? Well, you can literally change reality. You can go from being angry to calm in a second just by changing the story in your head and changing reality itself. And it's just it's a fucking super cool uh, superpower that we have when you think about it. But it's really hard to tap into that superpower when your thinking is stuck in fucking Facebook and Game of Thrones. So there you go. That's some good shit. <laughs> yeah, we could like just shut this fucker off right now. I'm like, yeah, that's it. This this week's episode, <laughs> change your reality. Like, man, that's so that is so powerful. It's your perception, you know. And I think a lot of people forget that. You know, they they miss that piece. They do. They, they just assume that the story that's playing out in their head is the same story that's playing out in everybody else's head. Yeah. And it's fucking most of the time it's so far. Yeah. They're so far from what's going on in your own little world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to how else it's being perceived, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it funny, is, man. man. Yeah. I never thought about that being like the human superpower. I guess because dogs, dogs don't have, I wonder if dogs have perception. They can't really change their perception of things. Not not like they, they change their perception based on like reality, you know what I mean? Like if you, if a dog that liked you, you all of a sudden start beating doesn't like you. You know what I mean? He's changed his perception. <laughs> He's changed his perception. But that was based on a, a ex- reality. Yeah. Right? Like, that's the thing with humans. Like, there, there's another book. I don't know if you've read Sapiens. Yeah. Yeah. So, you remember, the, yeah. at the beginning, he said, like, you know, it, it, it's a little bit different way of, of thinking about it. But he, he said that, again, the kind of the superpower, the thing that separates uh, humans from everything else is our ability to have a collective myth. Right? To tell ourselves a story and then to get other people to buy into it. Right? Like, the United States is not real. You know what I mean? There's no fucking lines on the ground out there that say, it, it, like, it, it's a collective myth. It's a collective idea that, that everybody who lives here has decided, okay, we're going to buy into this. Like, the, the economy works that way. Like, so many things work that way. And so that's our, our the ability to, to change those myths and, and manipulate those myths and get people to buy into them and think about it. Like, that changes people's reality and stuff and so it all uh you know all kind of ties in together but that's our uh that's our superpower man it's man. it's that it's that ability to tell ourselves a, a a story in our head and and then act on it be able to see it and act on it as if it was actually true and then to get everybody else to get other people to buy into that as well like that's that's what made us able to form groups and societies and, and do the things that we've done. Like that's the human superpower. But man, if you don't know it and you don't fucking embrace it, you don't realize that chaos is where it like, it's the old story of like, man, going and confronting the dragon and bringing the gold back for your people. Like it's going into chaos and confronting that shit and growing from it. And then and the gold is like, you know, the knowledge and the experience and the things that you gain from it. So that's the uh, that's that's the fucking oldest tale in time, man. So. I was re- I was reading about that the other day. I, I can't remember what article I grabbed or where it was, but talking about that tale, like you know, kind of like the origins of it, or you yeah. know, why, like what is really the lesson there? You know, that's, yeah, that's it's it's pretty it's powerful. Leaving order, man. Leaving yeah. your village, leaving your family, going into the the chaos side of things. It's the the hero's tale. And it's all part. Just plays of it. over again and over again and, and again and again, man. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's kind of the thing, man. That's kind of the, the 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 theme of the Jordan Peterson book is like, you can't get away from chaos, and trying to get away from it just fragilizes the system. I mean, he doesn't use those words, but that's kind of the tying the, those two concepts together. And so it's it's trying to avoid the chaos that causes the problems, 
you know, and, and it's embracing the chaos and understanding that it's walking that line between order and chaos. Like that's where we thrive. You know, it's like too much comfort isn't good. Too much chaos isn't good. There, there's a there's a fine line, but you have to have some, and that's where the the agitation takes place because we are anti fragile. You stress humans, and we get stronger. And that's that's we need the stress to be healthy and strong on so many levels. And that's the problem is like there's the the fucking myth of of happiness, right? Has caused people to change their focus from like surviving and bearing the struggle valiantly to I shouldn't have to deal with this. I should just be happy all the fucking time and anything that makes me unhappy is bad and I need to just fucking cut it out of my life. Well, most of the time, something chaos causes some level of unhappiness, but you know, I'm not happy when Kevin's smashing me, but I don't want to take a Prozac and not be unhappy, you know what I mean? Because like me being unhappy is what makes me fucking go, no, this isn't it. Uh, this isn't the end of the world for me anymore. I'm going to figure out how the fuck to get out of here. You know, like that, if I didn't feel unhappy about being smashed, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get the impetus that I needed to fucking change, man. So it's the chaos that, that, you know, spawns that. But I say, I mean, I think that talking about being happy, I think that's where so many people get fucked up is they, they get it in their head. Like that is their life goal. You know, like you ask them, like, "Hey, man, what do you want to do in your life? Or what do you want to be with you? Right? Be in your life?" They're like, "Oh, I just want to be happy." No, man, that's that's not the final destination no. on top of the mountain. No, it's it's not. Like if if you're just, you're because anything that's like just happy in the moment isn't gonna make you happy down the road. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, it, but a lot of a lot of shit that just sucks in the moment makes you happy. Hey, afterwards, yeah, you know, I, you know, I don't know where I heard it or picked it up from. Like, there's, there's like three levels of fun, so to speak. There's like your type one or your level one fun to where it's fun right at this moment, but afterwards it's non-existent or you could care yeah. less. There's type two fun or level two fun that fucking sucks in the moment, but afterwards it's like, yeah, I did, like I want to do that again. Then there's type three that was shitty in the time and <laughs> shitty afterwards. <laughs> I can't, I don't remember where I heard that from, but there's, there's some psychologist that's you know wrote it down into like type one, two, or three. But, huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that is, it like, is, yeah. That's yeah actually, happiness isn't the goal, man. No, it's, man. No, because life requires sacrifice. Like, that's kind of the other thing. Like, you know, sacrificing things in the future or in the present for the future. And again, that's like part of the thing. I remember, like, going quoting from the Jordan Peterson book, like, Crazy Hair, because he's the one that, again, like, kind of made me aware of it when he wrote about it. But he, again, one of the things that humans have, have cracked the code on is I can manipulate the future by making sacrifices in the present. So again, like we can manipulate the future. It's another, I guess we got a couple superpowers besides manipulating the current reality. We can manipulate the future through sacrifices and our actions today. So, you know, eating that piece of cake is great fun right now, but your future self is going to pay the price. Whereas denying yourself right now isn't so good, you know, or can, can have momentary pain, but afterwards, you know, your future self is, is happy for the dude, the, the, Guy immediately afterwards is probably happy because he he had the willpower and didn't give in. Future self years down the road is happy because he's not, you know, fucking fat and out of shape. But yeah, man, it's that ability to recognize the how the future or how the present is going to affect the future and like making appropriate sacrifices uh, to bring about the results that you're trying to look for in the future. But again, like with today's right now instant gratification i'm the most fucking important thing in the universe and you know that kind of shit like it's it's really hard that's not the message that people are getting today and so you know but i think that's why that jordan peterson book is is resonating like like, why him and his message are resonating with so many people because so many people just in in, they know in their soul that that's bullshit something there's got to be more to life than just trying to be happy all the fucking time and it's like, oh yeah, it is. It's there's way more, and and you know our ancestors had a lot of it figured out. And there's a lot of wisdom in you know the, in learning from them, and you know what they wrote down. And so yeah, but again, just interesting, interesting stuff, man. Dropping some knowledge today, James. You're, you're <laughs> fucking getting deep fast, dude. I dig it. That's good. <laughs> It's yeah, good. Well, I'm rereading that Jordan Peterson book. I had to read another one. I wanted to read it right after, but 
I've got this uh, that Tell Your Adventure Accelerator program coming up, and so I'm uh, I had to read the hard thing about hard things, which is one yeah of these, I've heard I've heard of that book. It's fine, you know, it, it's all right. I'm not gonna say I, I learned some decent things, but man, I got to tell you that whole like tech startup world is just an interesting world, man. It's it's just it, it's it's fucking wild, man, because it's just other people's money just getting burned and hoping that you're going to like acquire customers in a completely unsustainable fashion, you know, and hoping that you're going to grow big enough to get bought by someone. It's like, you know, there's this wall, right? Like your fucking foot's on the gas and you're speeding towards this wall and the wall is bankruptcy. Like, you know, it's coming, <laughs> right? Because nine out of 10 of these fucking companies, if not more, go out of business. That's why these venture capitalists, they're just constantly investing, making small bets, right? Again, going back to the anti-fragile, that's all venture capitalists are, is they're, they're making small bets, right? With big payoffs, potential payoffs. But the so most of them go out of business, and so it's called fucking bankruptcy. And, and they're, the car's going towards that wall, and they know that the, the, they're driving towards this wall, and they're stepping on the gas harder and harder, and they're hoping that someone's gonna step in before they hit that wall and buy the car and and take it over and and keep it from hitting the wall somebody bigger with more money and it's just kind of a wild wild way to think about things man so um anyways it's a different world so and i don't know i don't know why i <laughs> wanted to go into that it's just it's just a weird way to look at things because i got my business and i, I want to build something with peddling innovations i'm trying to build something that's sustainable it's a different mindset right like if you go into something realizing like this thing's either going to die or be sold in five years versus i'm going in to build something to last something that in 10 20 30 years is still going to exist and people are still going to get value from Man, the way that you just approach the problem and the and the the solutions that you see are fundamentally different. And I think that's why you can just tell companies that are come from we're trying to build something sustainable versus companies that are just trying to make a quick buck as quickly as possible. And uh yeah, it's just been interesting being on the other side of it and kind of seeing like, oh, that's why some companies don't give a shit about customer service, whereas I'm like you need to take care of these customers. You know what I mean? Like, I, anyways, so it, it, it is completely different mindset. You know, if you're playing, it's you know, it's kind of playing the long game and the short game. But if you're doing it for more than like, if you were trying to build something that's going to sustain f for years to come, yeah. as opposed to just <clears throat> mashing the throttle, yeah, and, hoping so, and, and then trying to wring the most out of it right before it drives off the cliff. Basically, so that's yeah. basically you know, it's yeah, a totally yeah. different, totally different mindset, totally different mindset. It's not, I mean, it's yeah. It, like the the goal is to like never some, drive it off the cliff, right? They want to come in. They want to have somebody come in and buy it because that's what I'm saying. Like you know, they're acquiring customers. There's you know basic thing like customer acquisition costs, right? Like just basic math that will tell you whether you're going to survive or not. If you're spending more money to get customers and 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 supply product than you're making, right? Like if I'm paying uh, fifty dollars to acquire a customer, my product costs twenty dollars, and or, you know, then I'm losing money each one, but I'm acquiring customers and they're buying. And so there's this like growth on the books, right? And, but it's not sustainable. You couldn't run a business for 20 years that way, losing money on every transaction or just breaking even. It's not sustainable, but that's what you have to do in that early part of that to hope that you can have someone come in who will buy the thing and then change the whole fucking model around to something that's more sustainable. You know what I mean? Like to me, that just that just seems weird. Like the bad. model's gonna have to change at some point because it's not sustainable. They're just gonna hopefully get someone to come in and do it for them. I, I don't know. It's it's just a weird it's a weird thing, man. It's a weird world. Just people spending other people's money like mad. So <laughs> it's easy to do when it's not yours. When it's not your money, yeah, I know, man. Spend oh, away. I got a million dollars in venture capital funding, and it's like, oh, okay, like so it's not your money, kind of thing. So you spend it differently. But yeah, anyways, it's just interesting peering into other worlds, you know, you just, you realize like, holy shit, like there's whole other, whole just, other just universes out there, man, that like, I just don't even know about or every once in a while I get a glimpse of. So speaking of whole other, whole other universes, I will consider you a success if you get to the point, make enough money doing this, your peddling thing or whatever. 
that you can clone your dog, like Barbara Streisand. Did you see that just recently? It came out on the nose a couple days. News a couple days. Yeah, twice now. <laughs> she she liked her dog so much. She cloned it once. I think she dropped like fifty G's on it, and then she cloned it again. She has huh. two. She has two clone dogs. She spent a hundred. How does an animal shelter people feel about this? <laughs> that is like the exact. Jesus Christ! That is like the exact opposite of the adopt don't shop mentality. Right, you know, right, right, right. Fuck it, I'm no, cloning no, no. them. You know what it is? It's the recycling mentality. <laughs> I'm just so maybe recycling. They, maybe they love it. Maybe yeah, they, we only need fucking ten dogs. We'll just recycle. Them. Yeah, I saw, I seen that the other day. Barbara Streisand cloned her dogs. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it was in the news a couple of days ago. I couldn't wait to share that. That's a weird world, man. Fuck yeah, it is. It's we live in a weird, weird time. You dude. think there's a clone person walking around out there that we don't know about? I think there is. I, I bet I, there is. I bet there is, dude. I bet there is. Yeah. I bet in China or Russia. Oh yeah, that, I, for sure in there's China. A clone person. Yeah, I do. Check well, I would say in China or Russia for sure. There's like clone families and shit and colonies. That's crazy. Here dude. in the states, maybe. But yeah, it's coming. Clone coming, man. troopers. It's coming. Remember Star Wars? The yeah. Clone Troopers? Oh, yeah. You know what's funny, though? I just I was just thinking, like... Because the original Star Wars... Like, they never... They weren't clone... Tro- they were just stormtroopers. And you never really knew that they were, like, all clones of each other. Like, I remember as a kid, like, I, you know, I never knew nah, that. No. Nope. Right? Like, that was something that came out with the new one. So, I wonder if it was an original thought. You know what I mean? When it came out in 1970, mid-70s, whenever the original Star Wars came out, was part of George Lucas's actual storyline... These are clones. Stormtroopers are clones of each other, and they're they're clone troopers. Or was that something that like? Because by the the two thousands, when the one, two, and three came out, and he started redoing the franchise again, like cloning was a big part of it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was it was a thing. Like we, you know. And so I wonder if he kind of wrote that in he, after know, the fact and made I, them clone troopers. I would, you know, I would speculate that. Maybe he did originally have that. Like, yeah, these are clones. And then, like, some producer was like, no one knows what the fuck clones are. Well, but just make an army. The thing is, like, how, how like, yeah, predictive yeah. of the future you know what I'm saying? would like, that have been? He, they're That's like, oh, wondering. being clones is too far-fetched. Let, let's dial it back a notch. Yeah, just have yeah. an army of fucking stormtroopers. Right. You know, because back in 1978, if you would have said clone, most people wouldn't have known what the word clone yeah. meant. That, you See, know, I wondered, man, because I remember I was watching again. Because I'm a fan of the Clone Wars cartoon. Have you watched that one? No. Oh, it's super good. It's probably one of the best Star Wars things done. I'm like, I don't know if you watch Star Wars movies. Not so. Sure. I watched the originals, like we yeah, talked about originals. when I was a kid. I haven't seen yeah. a single one, new one. One, two, and three sucked ass. You didn't need to see them. I haven't seen a single new and one. And the two new ones are pretty good. But the Clone Wars cartoon that they had on Cartoon Network was fucking kick ass. It was like, like Jedi's were meant to be a cartoon. Like you watch because it's got uh, Anakin and Obi Wan when they were like uh, Jedi's together, and Ahsoka Tano who was Anakin's Padawan. And, uh, <laughs> you're, dude, you're like speaking another language to me right now. I have no idea. There's like but, four words in that sentence. Dude, and I'm like, I gotta fucking look these up. They, I don't know but the cartoon does such a good job of selling them as badass motherfucking superheroes man it, it's it's such a good cartoon such a good cartoon man the, the enemies are great you got fucking um dude darth maul makes a comeback uh remember darth maul don't you no not really man yeah see who else they have oh uh, ventress she was fucking good dooku's anyways no nope. so many good characters man but um so anyways I, I was watching the original again with knowing they were clones and I was trying to see did they make a reference. And the closest I could come was when Luke, they're rescuing Princess Leia from the prison on the, the Death Star. And she's like, aren't you a little short for a clone trooper or something like that? Yeah. So I was like, the closest thing I could come in that original to like, you know, how would she know he's too short unless they're all the same? And, and you know that they're all the same height or something like that. So, but anyways, I don't know, because it would be like really eerie how he like was predicting the future of clone troopers <laughs> wouldn't surprise me wouldn't surprise me speaking of cartoons though man like i uh i broke down and i bought have you seen that illustrated like comic book version of the book of five rings i have i i've seen i meant to bring it, it over and show it. i bought it i okay. thought i got i got it off ebay dude for like eight bucks or something yeah. ridiculously cheap i couldn't resist i've seen it i'm like that looks fucking cool man so i ordered it and it just yeah. showed up at my house the other day i just started flipping through it read like the first couple pages it's pretty badass dude it's yeah. all it i mean the drawings are real cool nice that's pretty cool i think i saw it i'll have to yeah i'd like to check i'll it have out. to bring it over and show it to you but, it's pretty badass yeah i'll tell you how blasphemous it is you're like i got this wrong 
I'm sure. No, I'm did. kidding, dude. I'm sure. It's no, it's it's. I think it's a straight interpretation, just a graphic comic right. book, you know, interpretation of yeah. the Book of Five Rings. Huh. I think they tried to stick to it pretty good. Yeah. They I'll just, be curious. They threw, to see. Some, they threw some pictures in there just to entertain meatheads like me. Right, yeah. <laughs> Show them chopping someone's head off. And shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we can throw a little violence. Throw some in. violence. Violence will sell started, anything, yeah. man. Just ask hockey. Yeah. I mean, fuck. <laughs> fuck yeah. All right. So, cool, um, man. What else? I got some other pre show shit. Um, we talked about Jordan Peterson's book. Oh, so I went and competed last weekend, right? Yes, you did. First thing. I, there was something I saw as super fucking disturbing. Uh-oh. Well, there's more than one thing, but this one needs to be mentioned on the podcast because we got a lot of new people to jiu-jitsu listening to us. Yes. Dude, I saw so many grown-ass men walking around barefoot around the whole venue. I even saw several fucking white belts and even a blue belt standing at the urinal pissing barefoot. What the fuck? Yeah, dude, I, That's I, a little dude, interesting. That is so agitating to me, like motherfucker. I would think like self preservation would kick in. You would think, you would fucking. Think. I have, I, I have gotten some funky skin disease from a tournament on more than one occasion. I've been to so many of them in my oh. life, dude. I've gotten like a ringworm or something. One time I came back and I had some shit on my face and I went to the doctor. I was like, what the fuck is this? He's like, I don't know. Here's some fun. It's a fungus. Here, take this pill. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what that is, but uh, yeah, like. What the fuck, man? I got it. We, it actually has to be brought up to grown ass men to not, like, I walked into the bathroom. I seen these, there was two fucking white belts at like urinals far apart from each other, standing there pissing barefoot. And I almost lost my shit and said something to him. And I was just like, nah, man, fuck it. Like, I just don't have the energy. But like, come on, man. Like, yeah. so this, that's a lesson, dude. Like, you go to t- a tournament's just like your academy, man. Like, yeah. You don't stroll around barefoot all over the academy and then get on the mat. You don't go to the bathroom barefoot and get on the mat. You don't, you just don't fucking do it, man. If you care about yourself or your training partners, your fellow competitors, your feet. If, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways. Right. So, I was, okay. I was so fucking disturbed. I was curious, man. I was fucking like, right, a, what'd you see? What'd you see? Fucking yeah, adults. I'm a little surprised to fucking hear that, man. Yeah, you would think in this yeah. day and age. Yeah. With all the access to information out huh. there. Oh, but no. Maybe it was just a bad day for white belts. Oh, there's a lot of dumb fucking people in maybe the world. Saw James. Only three people. There's a lot of it. No. I saw a t- I only saw a ha- I saw probably <laughs> half a dozen pissing barefoot at the urinals. Ah. Uh, but dude, all day long I'd see people just strolling around barefoot. Mm. And then you go like you get on the mat and you're you're coaching somebody, you're on the mat, like you just feel this grime. Like, dude, come on, man. Like, I understand that there's thousands of people there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I understand there's going to be a, a fair amount. But you add to the fucking yeah. whole thing by strolling around barefoot. Yep. Disgusting, dude. It is. That is that's a little disgusting. It is so. disturbing. All right, yeah. So that's for all you white Sandals. belts out there, man. That's Just like fucking... Buy a $5 pair of goddamn flip-flops, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And if you lost, you forgot yours at home. Wear your shoes. Wear your, your socks. Shoes or just yeah, stop by. Goddamn, something, dude. The convenience store. Most of them have some flip flops or something. Something, like, man. Yeah. Huh. But very disturbing. Okay. Well, besides that, what else? How, what else you got to report um, on your your uh, your? I went all right, man. Like I lost my first match by decision. Yeah. Straight up zero zero, just a fucking stalemate. Yeah. We tried. We were wrestling each other, and like two minutes, and about halfway through the round. I do, neither one of us was taking each other down. It's just we could just tell like, so I just sat down. I was like, "Fuck it, let's do some jujitsu, yeah, man!" Let's like do I got, I got agitated, so I sat yeah. down, and started playing open guard, you know, and he couldn't pass my guard. You know, we get to half guard, and I would put him back to butterfly. Then I ended up putting him in close guard with like a minute left, and he couldn't pass, and I couldn't do anything. Yeah, and uh, fucking zero zero, and then I lost the decision. So my fault for letting it go to a decision. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's yeah, I can't. Decision. You can never complain about a decision. No. Like if you if you let it go to a decision, it's your fault. Yeah. So. Yep. Anyways, good lesson there. The dude was pretty good though, so that's all right. Yeah, I know. I yeah. lost to him at my He's, last. He was pretty good, man. Kicked my ass at the last turn. I'm glad to see he got promoted. Makes me feel better about myself. But uh, and then the next match is where I fucked my knee up, and so it's hard to explain. Like the dude, I took the dude down. And then, you know, the scramble ensued. I ended up in half guard, top half guard. And the dude got, like, the Eddie Bravo-style lockdown. And yeah. just, just extended his legs hard as fuck, dude. Yeah. And it popped my knee. And, like, initially, like, the thought went through my head. Like, I popped my knee and I got my leg out. So he, you know, took the, couldn't take the pressure on. And I was, you know, about to pass. 
And I thought, man, should I stop? Like, because it fucking popped pretty good. I was like, no, I'm fucking this dude up. <laughs> because, I don't know, it was just a dickhead move on his part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like he had an underhook to, like, try to like, extend his leg and jack me up, you know, and, like, get an underhook. Like, he was nowhere near a fucking underhook. He had nothing, man. He just, like, got the lockdown and just kicked his leg straight hard as shit. And I know you shouldn't attribute things to malice that just come from ignorance. But either way, it pissed me off. And so I fucking ran through him, man. <laughs> I should have been meaner. Looking back, dude, like I should have really smashed this fucking dude. Like I, I cut through him pretty good. I was up like 11 nothing, 12 nothing before I submitted him. But looking back, like I should have really fucking smashed him. <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm pissed at myself for not really smashing him, dude. Like for being an asshole. Because I'm, I'm pretty certain that the dude did it just to be a fucking dick. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. I mean, there's that. Yeah, that's why competition's tough, man. Yeah. It's not like you know that that maximum to take care of your training partner isn't is quite it there? the same. It's not the same, and so it's like doing something that's a bit dickheaded in the heat of the competition because you like again, there's like there's a fine line there, and I get line. that. No, I know. I'm not saying you're wrong for smashing the fuck out of them. No, no, not at all. But yeah, that's that's a tough thing with competition, really. You run the risk. I understand yeah. we're not out there playing patty cake. But if you're having to resort to dirty moves to win a match, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. You know that, that's my mentality. Like if you if your jujitsu is not good enough to where you got to do dirty shit, because that, that's just kind of, in my opinion, just kind of dirty. Yeah. Like, I, I have nothing wrong with a good solid cross face. You know, even a little knee in the eye socket. Like you yeah. know, some some heart some harsher shit. Yeah, I don't have a problem with man. But like that, I, I get the impression that this dude felt that I was gonna fuck him up. And so he was resorting to some, tried to go to some right. par- parlor tricks, dirty shit. Yeah. Because he was, you know, starting to, he was starting to drown and he was having trouble treading water. Yeah. That, that's kind of my impression, man. Yeah. Because like, yeah. you know when you, when, when you start tying up and wrestling with somebody. No, I know. You can tell pretty yeah. fast whether they're on your level or they're above your level. Like, yeah. you can tell pretty quick. Yep. And I could tell I was going to take this dude's lunch money. Like, once I took him down and we get, we started playing around a little bit, I was like, all right, this dude's not fucking keeping up. It just it was just a matter of like where do I want to go? What do I want to do to him? Yeah. And then I got a little bit late, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna pass this half guard. And then he snatched up the lockdown. My fault for letting it happen. Yeah. But then once he kicked his leg straight real hard, I was like, oh, you dick. <laughs> like this is where we're playing fucking different rules now. You know what I mean? They, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. If you're gonna play a dirty pool, let's play yeah. a fucking dirty pool. Yeah. So I shouldn't have let that happen, but it happened. So. Yep. And then I, I considered like I, I won, and I went and walked around for like 10, 15 minutes. And man, I wanted to keep going, but like, dude, my more intelligent side came out. Yeah. And so I pulled out the rest of the competition. Well, so. that's your repaired knee, too, man. You don't need to be. But that's the thing. Like, that knee, like this, yeah, this is the knee I had surgery on two years ago. And if this knee feels, felt good, yeah. it's my other knee that I figured I'd fuck up before too long. <laughs> <laughs> and my other knee doesn't feel great. And no, man, it's the one I had surgery on. And it's still like that. That was today's Thursday. That was on Saturday. This happened. It's still swelled up. And it's like, it feels funny, man. Huh. Like, so I don't know what happened. Like, I'm going to go see my therapist tonight. And that sucks. She should give me a pretty good assessment. As yeah. Well. Yeah. 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 No, man. It's frustrating, dude. Yeah. It's super frustrating. So. Yeah. I felt good, though, man. The two matches yeah. I had. It's good, man. <laughs> the two yeah. matches I had. Got like, back on the black belt saddle and. It was just it wasn't it was just the advanced no gi division. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. man. Anyways, one and one. Bombs, dude. I don't know. I hope, dude. I don't want to go down the surgery route again. Yeah. If I do, suck. we're gonna be doing a lot of grumpy guy shit because I'm gonna have four months from <laughs> four months off of work. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, but then the next decision comes in. Like, if I have to get surgery, being I'll be off work for about four months. Do I get surgery right away and just knock it out? Or side of me wants to, being that I would have an outside job, I was thinking about not getting surgery until like November 1st or December 1st. That way, if I did it November 1st, I could have all of November, December, January, and February off from work. So I don't have to be outside in the wintertime. <laughs> and then go back to work in the springtime. <laughs> but that, then that means I got to have a bum leg. You got to function without a fucking uh, ACL, ACL for a few months. Which... That's all right. <laughs> I don't know. It's doable. I mean, because last time I blew out my ACL, I did it. I heard it in May. I didn't get surgery until August. Hmm. Yeah, I was doing deadlifts today. 
<laughs> there you go. Me swallowing up doing deadlifts. Yeah, this ain't gonna hurt it. Now, if I was doing box jumps or something, that'd have been retarded. Right. But deadlifts huh. fucking good. Yeah, I, I did some deadlifts this morning. Did you? Had some, yeah, my buddies over and we did our, uh, what did we do? We did, I gotta call it the fucking, my hero workout, working on my skills and shit. So, we do, because I try to think of, uh, it's like the, the killer app thing, like what's the best exercise with each of the tools. So I got all the tools and stuff. So like body weight, we do uh, pull-ups, push-ups, and pistol squats. Do a couple rounds of that. And then we'll do uh, the ram rollers. And I'll do, uh, which a lot of people don't know what they are. They're a great training tool. They're actually like they're like a weighted uh, foam roller would be like the best way to describe them. But <clears throat> they got really good applications and stuff. And uh we did clean and press ladders with those because I got like a 20 kilo or 10 kilo of 15 and a 20 kilo one. So we just did like five ladders with that. And then we did some mace and Indian club stuff. And I was like, all right, we got to finish out with deadlifts. So I always finish out with deadlifts. Just pick up something heavy, man. There's just nothing like it. It's a good, you know, fucking feel like a man afterwards. And I'll disappoint you. Because I don't have a barbell with a bunch of weights at home, so I did kettlebell deadlifts. Oh, I just good. had 270 pound kettle kettlebells. Yeah, and I do such a good like I'll do this quite a bit, man. To where I'll just I'll take 270 pound kettlebells, and I, I'm basically doing like a really slow burpee. I'm doing a put like I put the kettlebells down, I do a push up on the kettlebell, push up, and then I step forward into a good deadlift position. Boom, yeah. do a deadlift, set them down, step back, push up, and then I, I'll do I just do. I just did a fucking bunch of reps with those. Nice. A bunch. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to subscribe to the mediocrities for pussies fucking mindset. There you go. <laughs> there you go, man. That's why I keep you around. <laughs> keep me honest. Nah, mediocrity sucks, but I like moderation. <laughs> so. Hey, that's the line though, right? That one's <laughs> for pussies though too. Moderation's for pussies too. <laughs> <laughs> stay away from that fucking line there's a fine line there yeah so that's good man I like fucking- so yeah, that was my competition adventure dude came back injured fucking disappointed yeah so here we are here we are man so okay got any other thoughts or whatever before we jump no, into some man. blue belt stuff oh we did have one email from billy He's emailed us before. Him and his son started yeah. jiu-jitsu. He said well, he asked a couple questions. One, he was hoping for that we would talk about some tips for wrestlers getting into jiu-jitsu. Okay, so that can be. I don't know. We we can do that another time. I can just touch on that real quick. Just yeah, I don't know. I I'll like, say fuck it. Don't be an asshole is probably the biggest thing. Yeah, like, be, I think probably the, uh, don't we, be an asshole. We we, we could <laughs> let, let me distill that down a little bit. <laughs> so. <laughs> Is what I mean by that is if you're coming in, it depends on how your wrestling background, but most of the time, there's a lot of new people that have no mat experience. And so if you're coming in with a fair amount of mat, a mat IQ, mat experience, wrestling time or whatever, you're going to have a leg up on people. So in wrestling, you know, you're taught to go fast and hard all the time. There's yeah. no, there's no volume control in wrestling, man. Like. It's effort. It's effort. effort, effort, effort yeah, effort. just you My go. My effort's going to beat your effort. That's exactly it, man. And if you behave like that, most people aren't going to want to train with you anymore. You're yeah. going to lose a lot of training partners. So a big thing is learn to adjust your volume knob. Like if you're going with somebody that's a lot smaller than you, definitely don't be an asshole. Yeah. And if you can out wrestle them and you're just beasting them, sizing them, like don't. No one's going to want to train with you, man. Um, man. That's probably one of the biggest things I could tell wrestlers coming yeah. in is you slow down. Because in my experience, when you get somebody with a good wrestling background to come in, there's no middle ground. They're either going to be, they're going to have a really good mad IQ and they're going to understand when to apply their wrestling strengths, but they know how to slow down and try to learn jujitsu. Or it goes to the other side to where you can't ever get that out of them and they just go fucking a thousand percent all the time and no one wants to train with them. I've never, I've never came across a wrestler that falls in the middle ground because we have you know one of our good training partners trey yeah he's got a and chris from montro like they both have good wrestling backgrounds college level wrestling backgrounds but they're good jiu-jitsu guys yeah they, they've taken the time like trey's really new to jiu-jitsu and chris been doing jiu-jitsu a long time but you can tell they're both kind of got the same mindset 
you know, they, they, they know how to go hard and fast when they want to. Yeah. But they also know how to, like, play jiu-jitsu, you know, and slow it down and learn and try jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And then you get a lot of wrestlers that don't know how to do that. They can't shut that ego down. They can't turn the volume down. And it's just going as hard as possible at all times. Yeah. And when you're 21, you can get away with that. Right. When you're 41, you can't get away with that. No. So, yeah. Both yourself and your training partner. Training partner. partner. So that, that's probably one of the biggest things. Yeah. I would say just like anything else, just realize your biggest strength can become your biggest weakness. Like, just realize that, yeah, you're going to be really good from the top, so you need to embrace the bottom game. Like, that's probably the wrestlers that I've seen that have progressed the fastest and, and you know, gotten the most out of jiu-jitsu, kind of embrace the bottom game early. Because that's one thing with wrestlers, they're taught never to be on their back. And so, uh, you know, one, like getting swept, you don't want to like give up sweeps, but you know, it's funny, like Chris, like he always starts on his back, yep. you know, and, and he works from his back and he, he purposefully works that side of it. And so he could easily just start up on his knees all the time and just dominate Stay on top. from the top. Yeah. And so, yeah, just knowing that, you know, embrace the bottom game, you know, uh, check the ego. I think that that's probably a big thing because... There's so much ego and win, win, win is the mentality with wrestling and realizing like, man, you're going to, you'll learn more from your losses than your wins. Like, you know, if you, especially when you're rolling with a higher belt, you know, if you can relax a little bit and be okay with being fucked up, like, oh, see what happens, you know, don't, don't just like every time you feel like you're in trouble, just switching on the athleticism and and the wrestling beast mode and and getting out of it because you're never going to get a chance to learn better ways to go about it how not to get put in those situations so yeah it's it's uh i'd say those are two, my two biggest things is just don't let that your strength become your weakness and embrace that bottom game but yeah i think that's it falls in i yeah. think we're saying the same thing just yeah. a couple different looks at it yeah right? wrestlers just, man they've got great potential man i mean i wish i it's because that mat, the, the, you know we talk about that mat iq just yeah. your awareness on the mat you're you're being comfortable on the mat and being hot and sweaty and out of breath yep. and getting smashed and being and that being your normal Right, yeah. Is you have such a leg up on most people. Um, yeah, especially yeah. starting out. Starting yeah. out. Like you compare to a white belt that has no, no. wrestling experience. Yeah. And it's just. You're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of them. And yeah. you can, and like like you said, your strengths are going to be your biz, biggest weaknesses also. But you can use that mad IQ just to skyrocket your jiu-jitsu game. Or you can use it to never Fragilize advance. your Fragilize system. Fragilize the system. Man. Yes. Like it, you can be. Yeah, it's. And it, it's funny, man. I've I, I've yet to ever see a wrestler that's in that middle ground. Yeah, it's either they're great training partners and they like to learn, and but then you can they're a good resource. You can learn takedowns from them. You can see what they're doing on top, uh, or they're just fucking assholes and no one wants to train with them. Yeah, 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 there, yeah. There's never an in between, dude. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, so don't be the don't be that guy. Yeah, no, so that's good. Yeah, good advice for. And then uh, the other question he had was a uh, uh, podcast. So he he said he drives like six hours a day. Yeah. So I don't know if he's like me, drives a lot, or for a living, or if he's just got a shit ass commute. Either way, buddy, right. <laughs> I feel for you. Feel for it, I feel man. I feel your pain. Yeah. So he said other podcasts besides Grumpy Guy BJJ because obviously this is yeah. Those. This is this is the one. I, I mean, got. Uh, I'll, I'll have to defer to you. Yeah, man. dude. I I spend like I drive for a living. Yeah. So I spend literally, man, anywhere from four to six hours a day listening to podcasts, audio books. And I do, I like, I very, li- very rarely listen to the radio. Because again, yeah. it's, like, it's, it's like that junk food. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll listen, sometimes I'll check out, just put on some music, you know, because yeah. you need to unplug or whatever. But dude, 99% of the time, it's audio books, podcasts. And, and within that podcast field too, sometimes I listen to more entertaining stuff, but most of the time it's educational type stuff. That's what I really like. Um, but it varies. You got to yeah. unplug. But anyways, I got a whole list of them, man. Like, of got? course, JRE. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, the Joe Rogan. Experience. The Joe Rogan that's experience, dude. One. That's I, I listen to that one religiously. Yep. Some of them are completely ridiculous. You learn some good shit. Like, yeah, I tend to skip I, the ones with fellow comedians. Like, I don't. I don't. I, know. I, I listen. Do I listen to all of them? Yeah, I, 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 I don't have the time. Like, yeah. so I, I have to be a little more selective. Yeah. So I, I tend to not listen to those and and listen to. But yeah, he has just. You know Joe himself. I, I think he's an he's an interesting cat. He definitely yeah. has some interesting views on stuff. So you can't get like too. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you want to listen to it for him, but I listen to it more for the people he's interviewing. Obviously, he just interviews some fascinating motherfucking Dude. people. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. That's probably like my number one. I was sure one suggestion I'll give you though, since you skipped the ones with comedians. If he ever has Bill Burr on there, yeah, or Joey Diaz. 
Dude, don't skip those ones. <laughs> They're fellow comedians, but do not skip those ones. Okay. They're fucking gold, dude. All right. <laughs> but anyways, uh, man, there's quite a few. Radio Lab's a great one. You kind of nerd out on that. I was listening to catching up on some old episodes this week on that, dude. It's such a good... It's, I mean, it's an NPR-produced right. podcast, so they are very... Uh, left-leaning. Yes. Left-leaning is saying it nice. That's okay. I could use a dose of that once in a yeah, while. That's all right. <laughs> it's all good. Um, Mind Pump is more of a fitness based, you know, yeah. nutrition based podcast. Talk about that one a couple times. It's good, and they put out a ton of content, dude. I, I think they do like five podcasts a week, and it's good. Like they put out good stuff, yeah. man. They're all there's like three. There's like Sal, Sal, Adam, and Justin are the host of it, and they got good information. Like they're not dumb dudes in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Like they know what they're talking about. Nice. You know, they were. I guess they were real, all very successful trainers before they branched out and kind of did the entrepreneur thing. Yeah, and so now they're entrepreneurs and running. I don't know. They're pretty successful, but it's cool. Cool. They get the thought, and, but they and they don't just talk about. I mean, of course, if it's a lot of it's fitness and nutrition based, but they're venturing out and like talking about all kinds of other shit too. So it's pretty cool. Huh. Um, when I say the Sam Harris podcast, okay. that's fucking good, dude. Sam Harris is yeah, wicked genius. Yeah, yeah. Jordan Peterson podcast, that's another one. Like you will feel dumb listening to it, <laughs> but hopefully you get a little bit smarter. Uh, Barbell shrugged. That's a good one. It's again. That's a lot of it's fitness, nutrition based. Yeah, it originally started like CrossFit heavy, but they've they've kind of changed and grown too. Yeah, and they've gotten a lot better over the past year. Like it's a good podcast. It's cool. Um, Jocko's podcast is good. Yeah, I've listened to a couple of those. Episodes. I can't. I can't get into it a ton. Yeah, just because I'm. It's so usually so heavy. You know, in the military. Yeah, and being that I wasn't in the military, I just maybe can't relate. But he's got some good information on yeah. there. You know, it's good. He's an inspirational guy. Fuck for yeah, sure. he is. Um, Malcolm Gladwell's Revisionist History. That's good, dude. It's not... I don't think he's put out any new episodes in a while. Yeah. But it's he He gives a different outlook on some events in history that you wouldn't think about. And that dude's wicked smart, too. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Ted Radio Hour. They take a TED... Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They take Listen TED Talks. Some of those. Yep. They take yep. TED, TED Talks and turn them into an audio version. Yeah. Because you know, a lot of TED Talks will have video presentation yeah, along with it. Yeah. So if you're not at home watching YouTube, it's kind of hard. We listen to a couple of those. <clears> so way, they... they yeah, they edit them and yeah. turn them into a... It's another NPR yep. one. Yeah. 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 But so it's good. Definitely got a little left-leaning yes. biases with what they're sharing here yeah. and there. But Definitely. again, it's, it's not bad. It's but that's, I mean, I could go on forever. I'll just yeah. cut it right there. Those are good. I'll, I'll say uh, two other ones that I've actually come across. Uh, there's one called, um, what was it, Myths and Legends? Yep, that's a good one. Which is really good where he, he digs into like the origins of the myths and the legends, which are oftentimes a lot darker and different than what we've been told. Um, and then uh, Hardcore History. Dan Carlin. Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, man. Like, that one is... I Like, if, if I run out of Joe Rogan's, like, that's my next... Like, I, that's my number two go-to. Because, man, like, I mean, fucking knowledge of history is so important. Man, like, the lessons that you can get from it is so important. And he does such a brilliant job. It's so entertaining the way he does life. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So entertaining and 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 it's yeah. So um, anyway, so those are two more I would throw in there to to, to add to the mix. But um, yeah, so and I, I just stuff. cut it right there because I'll uh, I have my go tos. You know, if I run out of this one, I go to this one, and, right. and I stay within those. But I I'm always listening to new shit, and that's the beauty of it, man. There's so much free content. Yeah, good content, and there's some of them you come across that are fucking terrible. <laughs> and, and I, I listen to quite a few, and there's, you know, I'll try it. Like I'll just be scrolling yeah. through, like, oh, let's listen to some new podcasts this week. Like on Sunday at home, I, I will I'll pull up my app and I'll start scrolling through, you know. And I'm like, oh, let's try this one, this one, and this one this week, and download a few episodes, and then I'll, I'll get into it, and I'll be like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, yeah. I've done that a few times. Yeah, but you don't so. know if you don't try. Exactly. And, and do and there's podcasts to do with anything, dude. Like anything you're interested in. You can pretty much find a podcast about yeah. it. If you're into mountain biking, there's the Bike James podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't throw your plug but, in there. I, yeah, I never yeah, listened yeah. to the Mike James podcast. Nah, yeah, if anybody Not, wants to hear just just me being grumpy about mountain biking, you can <laughs> uh, the old Bike James podcast. With uh, so, but anyways, so, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't mention that, man. No, it's all right. I haven't done an episode in a while, but yeah, man, I did quite a few. Over the years, I wasn't like super consistent with it. It wasn't like a main thing, but yeah, I've done dozens and dozens. Nice. So, 
But anyway, some of them are better than others, <laughs> for yeah, sure. They will be. As for you guys sure. can all tell, listening to this, some yes, of them are better than some others. Some are better than others, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think that's really it, brother. That's all yeah. I got for pre-show stuff. Yeah, man. So... All right, let's dig into some freaking... Blue, the Blue Belt Blues, Blue Belt huh? Blues, man, yeah. So, first, we got to share Z's advice. We asked uh, uh, my little boy, my five-year-old Z, how do you beat the Blue Belt Blues? Uh, before, wait, before you give that answer, let's, just in case... Uh, so, the Blue Belt Blues, we see a ton of people quit at Blue Belt. And if you spend time at Jiu-Jitsu, man, so many people quit at Blue Belt. And that's what we're kind of referencing. You know, people right, get yeah. discouraged. You see a lot of blue belts having a, they struggle, and it is what I see a lot is blue belt will be struggling. You know, mentally with things, whatever. They get a little bit dinged up, and that just kills their jiu-jitsu career. They got to take a little bit of time off the mat, and being that they were mentally discouraged, and then the injury happens, then they're just like fuck it, and they write it off, and you never see them again. So that that's kind of where we're coming from. Is, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the missing blue belts, man. Like the blue just, belt blues, the blue belt man. blues, and that, that's I think that's what kills most of the careers at blue belt is discouraged, injury happens, disappear. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're trying to combat today. Yes. Is fix that. Now that we've fixed that. Fucked now up. that we've defined it, we can tell you yeah. Z's advice, which is to punch it to death. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is perfect, dude. That just is punch, it to, punch it to death. How do you stop the blue belt blues? Punch it to death. Yes. So, or beat it. That's what we asked him. How do you beat the Blue Belt Blues? That's okay. why he said punch it to death. So. I think it's a good answer. That's a good answer. So, we'll just call it at that. So, this has been your... Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, no, man. You're, you're... Yeah, the... Like we were saying at the beginning, there's a reason there's a saying for it. You know, cliches are cliche for a reason because they're usually true on some level. And so, you get the blues... At Blue Belt, it can be a little, uh, you're going to go through your your periods of being frustrated and feeling a little uh, depressed and blue about your jiu-jitsu. And so, yeah, a lot of people quit. A lot of people don't really know how to uh, um, deal with it. And so, yeah, it's kind of the, the point of today's episode is to identify some things. So, Because it, it, you don't want to wait until you're in the middle of it. You know, like you want to be proactive. If you can realize, like, all right. During blue belt, this is going to happen. It's normal. It's totally normal. I'm feeling this way and having these thoughts is totally normal. And uh, and, and proactively having some you know uh, some way to try to combat it when it comes up. So I think that's kind of the the point. Is hopefully we can help people avoid getting caught up in it. But even if you are, this will kind of help you get out of it. But yeah, so many people quit at blue belt that it's definitely a uh, Definitely a problem. So maybe if we can get one more person to stick it out with this episode, I, that's so. my hope, dude. Because I, man, I get I get agitated like when someone quits jujitsu or they disappear for a while. Dude, it straight up pisses me off, man. It really <laughs> does. It's like, God damn it, man! Like, what are you doing to yourself? You know, like you you've embarked on this journey and then you just fucking quit. Yeah. Like, what? what there's no reason for that. No. There, there's not. Like, you, you don't have to be training to be a world champion all the time. Like, you're telling me you can't carve out two hours a week to do jiu-jitsu? Yeah. You know, you don't, like, if you're having, if you're struggling to find time to do it, like, you don't have to stay after and roll all the time. You know, like, you don't have to stay after and bullshit. You know, we talked about this stuff before. Like, you can just be structured about it, man. You can show up. You can put in. You can, okay, two hours of your day. You can't tell me you can't two two either once a week or twice a week for two hours. You can't take the time out for yourself to do jujitsu. Yeah, man, I get well, man, I, of, I get pissed, dude. Yeah, I, I, I do. I get straight up mad. I will say, like, if if anything, like, if someone finds something else, like as, as much as I'm like jujitsu is the best thing in the world and everybody should do jujitsu. The reality is it's not necessarily for everyone, right? right. So like, let, let, let's say you decide that you want to get into jiu-jitsu and, and you don't know. The person you're going to be in three years isn't the person that you are today. Right. Priorities, things change. So maybe you, some things change and you decide like, you know, okay, you enjoy mountain biking more, like doing a reverse of it, of what I did. You know, I I've, I've, I don't mountain bike nearly as much as I used to because of jiu-jitsu. But the thing is I didn't. I didn't quit mountain biking and not replace it with something. And that's what happens with a lot of people who quit jujitsu is they're not 
replacing it with something else. It's not like they found something else that's that's kind of filling that that thing that jujitsu should be doing for you, although nothing does it as well as jujitsu. It's that they're just like, I just don't have time for anything. I don't have time for myself on any level. And so therefore I've just got to quit jujitsu because I don't have time to do anything. So that's I think, you know, no good. That 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 pisses me off too, because that goes to a deeper level of like you just don't respect yourself. Right. Like, again, it's one of those rules in the Jordan Peterson book, like, you know, take care of yourself like you would someone that you're responsible for taking care of. Like if you had a kid, would you let your kid just come home and sit on the couch or would you tell him, no, you need to fucking go to practice today. You need to go do your you need to do these things. Right. Like so you take care of other people better than you take care of yourself, which is nuts. Right. So anyways, that's the I, I totally agree. That pisses me off, too, though. But that, that just shows a, a psychology that people have. And that, that's that's really what pisses me off is that manifestation of the psychology. It's the psychology behind it. But yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100 percent that, you know, if someone is to find a different hobby, like they don't they just don't enjoy it. It's not for them anymore. And they, they get into something else. Uh, yeah, that doesn't agitate me nearly as bad. Of yeah. course, if I lose a good training partner, the yeah, selfish reasons, I'll rip like on, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. like that's cool, man. As long as you're still being active and you're improving yourself and you're being healthy, yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah. Like, hey, man, like I don't want to do jiu-jitsu no, anymore. I want to rock climb. Fucking hey, man, do it. Have it climb some mountains, dude. That's cool as shit. Yeah, but in my experience, nine out of ten people that quit. It's not because they found another new hobby that they're no. really enjoying. No, it's just especially at blue belt. Especially you, at blue belt, you put in so much time and energy to get to blue belt that like you didn't have a lot of other. Hobbies. Yeah, that was your hobby. Yeah. Like that's it. This yeah. is your hobby. Like if you haven't figured it out by the time you got a blue belt, which for most people is going to take you know a year to two years, um, like that's that's a lot of time to invest in in that. So like you should fucking know. Um, by that point, which, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe some people will realize like, oh shit, this ain't for me. Yeah. This is a fucking grind kind of thing. So, um, but anyways, yeah. so. So yeah, if you, ta- if, you, if you take up a new hobby, we'll cut you some slack. Yeah. If you're just being a lazy bitch, uh, yeah. you're not getting any slack from us. Yeah. No, nope. exactly. Simple as that. Yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll dig into it. And no, uh, uh oh. working out is not another sport so if, if you quit jujitsu i'll argue that to if just it, work out if i'll at the argue gym. that if you want to be a crossfit nut job have at it oh. at, at least it's as it can be a semi-healthy endeavor it, yeah. it's not any more dangerous than jujitsu is no so if you want to if, if you want to be the best worker out in the world yeah have had it that's man. a sport that's a sport yeah, that's it a is sport. nowadays so i like at least at least you're doing something if you're just going to the gym to get swollen and, and look at ladies but, on the elliptical like, I, I, and I guess I'm gonna keep arguing with you too, because it, it, if you're if you if you're trying to get jacked, you just want to be just some muscled up meathead. I appreciate that too. If you just want to start shooting steroids in your ass and fucking lifting weights all the time and wearing really small t-shirts, go for it, dude. Like at least you're doing something. I, I don't care. Or if you're doing CrossFit like a maniac, that's cool. But it, right. it's where I'll lose my shit is if you're just being a fat lopper shit. Stuffing McDonald's in your pie hole and not doing anything. Yeah, that's true. So if you want to be the best worker outer, or you just want to be a roided up meathead, I don't know. These are both both things that I approve that yeah. are robbed approved. I just still think like you should if you're working out, you're working out to like what the fuck are you working out for? You should have something you're applying your fitness to. Hey, 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 just maybe it, out. maybe it's just to get chicks. So. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's the idea maybe the dude just wants to get jacked to pick up girls man he's, he's applying, applying he's applying, he's applying his, fitness, his fitness, fitness you're picking up chicks yeah yeah it is true you know it is true hey, in like the purest sense of the word he is applying his fitness in a uh, it, but it's what's real paradigm crushing to somebody like that is when you, <clears throat> when you finally make the realization that you're working out to impress the other guys at the gym and not really to impress the girls Right, you care more. Yeah, you, you're, can, yeah, you find yourself saying, "Oh, everybody, see how much I, I fucking yeah. lifted over there." Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that is disturbing. That, that, that fucks people up. <laughs> Be honest with yourself. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, man. <laughs> so. Oh God, gems, man. <laughs> Public gems are such a funny place. They're a sight. They are. They are an interesting, man. Like they're just like so much of them. They're not necessarily about being, you know. Uh, they're not about fitness, right? Because you're, you're you're overselling memberships. If everybody who actually had a membership showed up, you'd be fucked. Yep. You know what I mean? So I remember realizing that when I managed a gym, and I was like, "This isn't right." Like the the again, the system is fundamentally flawed. 
Like we, we count on people not coming and mm-hmm. just collecting their money. Yep. Like, that's insane. You know, that you have the whole industry set up that way. So, uh, but anyways, yeah, the fitness industry is funny for sure. Spent way too much time in that fucking weird world. So, Hey, but at least if you're working out. Yeah. Like I say. All right. Blue belt blues. Man. <laughs> Get away from the fitness industry. Fucking A. All right. So, so oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. no. So go ahead. You, you, you were, I, the way that I approached it was, was similar to what I think you, you did. We were talking a little bit. Uh, kind of trying to identify some of the problems that yep. contribute to the Blue Belt Blues and then, you know, some potential solutions and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I don't know what... Hey, that's, yeah, we, yeah, we both kind of approached it the same way. Yeah. So I have, I basically broke it down to four different problems as yeah. to why you would, you know, so to speak, get the blues. Yeah. Um, the first one... Is that you? Uh, you achieve that goal of getting the blue belt. Ooh, yeah. And then you don't really know what, the, or the next goal. Let's say your next goal is purple belt, but it's so far away, so far it's away. kind of daunting, and so that discourages people. I think that's a big one. Yeah, yeah that, that's. I, I get that. I got that down here too. Like promotions come slower. Yep. So it's you know if you were doing the, uh, yeah, if you're doing jujitsu for the belt promotions. And, and all the stripes and stuff like that it's gonna be you better have some patience yeah it's gonna be tough <laughs> which to me is why I hate the fucking green belt idea of that just that to me just sends the wrongest message like how on earth are we hoping to create stronger blue belts who are more likely to make it to purple belt if we're afraid that the fucking six months that it takes between your fourth stripe and actually getting your blue belt is going to destroy your uh willingness to come in and train so now we got to create a green belt to bridge that gap you know yeah, what i mean dude, like, I, I will yeah that shit frustrates me um i you know <laughs> whenever you go to these tournaments you see um a couple of jiu-jitsu schools that do that yeah that, they throw you know they throw in the additional colors like for those of you that don't know brazilian jiu-jitsu is for adults you know the belt system is white blue purple brown black yeah simple as that you get up these other schools that throw in like a blue and white and then they throw in like a green belt like god damn it man and the the they can word it any way they want but the only reason to do that is to keep people inter- interested and keep people from quitting yeah the, 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 there's no other way around that man yep. that's exactly what that is that that is it is cuz you people get discouraged you know maybe they're not getting promoted yet and they're not kids, man. Like I understand, li- little kids have all kinds of different belts. I have no idea how even the kid little belt, the you know, little kid belt system works. It's I don't just, either, man. Dude, there's so many no colors. Clue. There's fucking gray and white and gray and white stripes, and just yellow, yellow and, and orange. Jesus yeah. Christ, dude! I, I don't even care enough to wrap my mind yeah. around it. Like, just give me a picture, I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. With adults, man, like I did, I totally disagree with throwing in extra belts there, man. There's that that systems there. You're just trying to retain. St- I understand it's a business. You're trying to retain students so you can keep your doors open. But man, it, it agitates me. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, like, and I don't mean to be disrespectful if you're at a school that does that, but don't fool yourself for what that is. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. Yeah, it's that they, they were, because because they know what we're talking about today happens. The blue belt blues. So many people quit there because there's such a long time between your next shit, your next belt. That that so many people get discouraged. Yeah. We've seen it at first hand at our gym. Oh yeah, you know somebody we I know somebody you know that was blue belt and he he thought he was ready for purple belt and our coach is like no you're not ready yet and he quit straight up. I mean he he could say it was for other reasons but that was it and there's we got another guy that's right there too that he's on the verge of quitting. You know what I'm saying just because he thinks he's probably ready for purple belt and he's just not getting it yet. Like dude, it'll come, man. Yeah, and if you're doing it for the belts, I, that's the thing. You're man. maybe you're in it for the wrong reason. You're in the wrong. You're reasons, in it. You man. You, you really are. So yeah, I I, I, I would say too, man, that like, em- fuck, embrace your your white belt and your blue belt time. Like you're gonna look back fondly on it at some point too. Like you were a goddamn idiot. No one expected anything from you. Yeah. And man, there's like freedom in that. There's like, you know, I, I still, I've talked about this before. Like I think blue belt's actually like probably the funnest belt because somebody thought enough of you to put a belt around your waist, put a little color on you. But 
no one still expects anything from you at all. There's no pressure from a like, this person needs to be really technically sound and why did you do that? And it's like, dude, like you, the purple belt fucked with my head. It took me a few months to kind of grow into that thing. All of a sudden, I remember my first, I was like, holy shit, I better not. Like I was coaching a class and I remember thinking like, I better not fuck this up. Like I can't, you know, I can't just kind of laugh it off anymore. Like, oh, here's the blue belt. So yeah, like I almost kind of reversed it in my mind where I was like, like these are the good times. This is where your your progressions are coming the fastest, and your you know, which is one of the things we can talk about too, because I slow down at blue belt. But yeah, don't be in a big ass fucking rush to get out of blue belt. You're gonna look back and be like, man, that was kind of fun, and I don't know my fucking hurry to get all this pressure and and shit on me was, um, which all of it's all in your head anyways. What we've talked about before. Yeah. But yeah, 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 man. If it, but yeah, I don't that's your goal is to get to the next belt. Again, you're doing it for the wrong reasons and you're missing out on, on where you're at right now. You know, like where you're at right now is a great place. There's, there's things that are great about where you're at now that it's going to be different down the road. So like enjoy where you're at right now. So anyways, sorry, it's kind of a little, uh, no, I, I fully, yeah. I fully anticipate this subject's causing us to go on rants in several different times. Yeah, just like yeah, I, yeah, that, that whole different color belt, you know, causes me to rant. You know, and I'm gonna kind of rant again. Like, so you see people they get pissed off because you know they they get the blue belt blues and they're not getting promoted, but it's these same fucking people that you see that you know they get a little bit discouraged and instead of working harder. And pursuing trying to trying to be better, they're not putting in the extra work. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, like for example, for at our school, you know, I can think of a couple people that are kind of in the blue belt blue stage. But guess what? When we had that, when Pimento was here doing a seminar, did they show up? Nope, <laughs> they weren't fucking there. You know what I mean? Like we had the opportunities for you to show up, train hard, like. And for a seminar, a guy that level would would we charge fifty bucks? Yeah. And you didn't. You you think you're ready for the next belt, but you're not willing to to you can't pony up fifty bucks and come train with someone at that high level and learn some shit. Yeah. And but you're gonna complain that you're not that you're not getting promoted yet. Yeah. You know, they, they, it goes back to the whole the whole you know Jocko extreme ownership thing. Like, dude, you gotta fuck it. You gotta own up to where you are in your life. Yeah. You, you know you can't. Yeah, it's on your coach to um, promote you, but man, if you put in the work, it'll come. Yeah, and if you're not if you're not getting it yet, just fucking work harder. Work harder. That's it. They like, get it's it's on you, man. They like, yeah. it's your it's your journey. It's on you, dude. Like this, I man, I get frustrated, dude. I, no, I, I know. I, it, it's a it's an interesting time. We were, we kind of talked about it before a little bit, like that concept of unfreedom to freedom like you need a period of unfreedom where you're told exactly what to do and how to do it and this is what you work on because it builds the structure that you need to start having freer thinking and seeing things in a different way and so that's kind of what happens like at white belt it's it's very unfreedom this is you learn this you do this this is what it is and and as in the progressions come pretty quickly and stuff and so but then you get to that blue belt phase and that's that middle ground you, you have to transition from that unfreedom to freedom because like by the time you get into purple belt you know by the time you're done with purple belt man you better be in that freedom stage like you better have like your game and kind of not not have to have someone telling you what to do and, and what to work on all the time and uh but if you don't understand that, right? Like I think that's kind of what the psychological stress that a lot of people at that stage go through, but they don't recognize what is the stress from. And it's this growth process. The growth is uncomfortable. You're being asked to grow from a little baby basically where everything's done for you. All your thinking is done for you to an, you know, an adult where you're able to think for yourself. And that's where, again, like people get pissed off. They start blaming their teammates. Yep. You know, hey, I'm not progressing because my, you know, my coach isn't doing this or my teammates or whatever. And it's like, no, man, that's that's you trying to cling to that unfreedom mindset where someone should be telling you what to do and, and structuring everything for you versus you having to figure it out for yourself. Like, what do you need to work on? What are your weaknesses? You know, that kind of thing. So... Um, yeah, I think that's kind of that psychological transition is really tough for a lot of people because they're just not 
uh, they're not used to it. No, and I, I would agree 100. percent And it, like an analogy I like to use is I, I think blue belt is like going through your awkward teenage years. You know, like you're starting to hit puberty and you're starting, you're older now. So you get a little more leash. Your parents let you go out and do shit a little bit more. You get to stay out a little bit later, especially once you hit the age of like 15, 16, your yeah. friends start being able to drive. You know what I mean? So you're, you're going to, you're st- like you got, you're getting a little more freedom. So within that freedom become, comes more choices and you're expected to make the proper choices. Yeah. And then that's basically where you're at at blue belt. At white belt, you're just a kid. You don't get a lot of choices. No. You're told how to do shit. Told how to do it. Hey, man, this is how you do it. There's, there's not a lot of decision making here. No. Very little decision making. You're just told how to do it. Blue belt is kind of like, it's getting like, it's like getting your driver's license. All right, we're sending you out in the world. Don't fuck it up. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, we're still here watching you, you know, but you, there's a lot of decisions you need to be making on your own. Yeah. That's, and, and it's a confusing time, man. That's why we're... Because you always see, we were awkward as teenagers, and you see a lot of awkward teenagers, you know, because like, you're figuring shit out, man. And yeah. It's kind of the same thing as Blue no, Belt. No, that is, man. It's, That's totally it. But it's it's easy to, uh, one of the things I got here is like, be aware of self-pity. Like there's, yeah, I've talked about this before. It's funny, like people approach things, like if you can get someone else to admit that your situation sucks, then you win. Yep. Right? And so I, I, I kind of see that. Like I remember like, falling into that myself a little bit like you know being aware of it kind of helps you recognize what's going on but I man I remember when we first opened the gym I talked about this before it was me you Kevin Cameron and Nick Henney like I was so far at the fucking bottom of the totem pole <laughs> it wasn't even fucking funny man every day was just ass whooping I didn't you know what I mean I couldn't get anything on anyone and dude it would it would like it was frustrating i would feel like i'm not you know getting better and stuff like that but i'd have to remind myself like dude this is bullshit this is the self-pity bullshit if i can get someone else to admit like yeah your situation sucks like it doesn't help it doesn't help the situation and now this is mental energy and time that i'm spending thinking about self-pity rather than focusing on my the problems and how do i fix my problems and so man that self-pity it's so easy to fall into and it's like, fuck, man, you know, oh, it just sucks that I, I don't have more training partners my own level that I can work with or, you know, whatever the fuck. Again, it's like blaming your training partners. It's like, God damn it, dude. You, you, it's going to happen, right? Those thoughts are going to go through your head. Self-pity is a fucking natural human emotion. But if you don't recognize it for what it is and like treat it like the fucking poison that it is in your mind then it, dude it's like you said it's easy to start it's gonna be that fucking, poison yeah it's good yeah, yeah it's man. gonna bring you down yes yeah. yeah 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 so but if again if you're not aware of it then you just fucking keep doing it so um yeah man so i got that be aware of self-pity and how it wastes <coughs> energy excuse me don't blame others i think uh Oh, what is it? the other thing I got down here? So progressions come slower. Um, your promotions come slower. Uh, the other thing that will fuck people up is like, you know, peers catching up and passing you. You know, p- people coming in and, and people that used to beat up on. Like, that's the thing at Blue Belt, man. Like, you're going to go through phases where you're not progressing as fast as someone else. Or, or you know, you used to do something really well that was confusing people and, now people are getting privy to it and they're starting to learn how to shut it down. And, and now you're going to have to open up your game and figure out another a, another thing. But uh, what's up, Z? Nothing. You got some advice for us? You want to say hi? Uh, we're actually going to pick Tita. Okay. <laughs> Today is my daughter's 13th birthday and they're going to go pick her up. All right, man. We'll give me a kiss. I'm going to say hi to everybody in Grumpy Guy. You got to say hi, dude. You're, we're recording you right now. So, Z, how do you beat the Blue Belt Blues? Punch it to death. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Advice from Z. Perfect. All right, buddy. Okay, man. Well, we'll see you when you guys get back. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. All right. <laughs> That's get, he was our first guest, that grumpy guy go. at BJJ. There we go. Our first guest. Our first guest, Z. Infamous Z. So, um, yeah, man. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, know. people catching up. Yeah, yeah. So, and that'll fuck with people's heads, you know. But again, that's that ego thing, man, where you're, you're, uh, you know, you put these expectations on yourself. Like, I should be beating this guy. 
and now all of a sudden I'm not and yeah so it's uh there's a lot of different things that'll fuck with your head at that level what else I got here well, let me go let me jump into yeah, this yeah, you, jump we've in. touched we've touched on this but those expectations like so when you're when you're the white belt then you get promoted to that blue belt all of a sudden you you start putting all these expectations on yourself like I should be better I should be better at this yeah. this should be stronger blah 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 and I did that. I'm still doing that when I got promoted to black belt. Like that shit never goes away. But you gotta respect that for what it is. Like those expectations you're putting on yourself. No one else is putting those on you. Yeah. And, and to let them beat you up and to let them discourage you, you're not doing yourself any good. It's okay to be self-critical and, and analyze and try to improve, but most of the time the expectations you put on yourself are super high, and and you're just. You're not doing yourself any good. Well, again, I think yeah. the expectations come from a white belt. The it, you're making progress by leaps and bounds. Yeah, you know what I mean. You start from knowing nothing, walking in the first day, knowing literally nothing. Like maybe here's closed guard, right? right. I, I saw UFC. I know what fucking closed guard is, right? But besides that, you, you know absolutely nothing. To within a year, it's pretty fucking amazing. I mean, honestly, when you think about it, that like, I, I remember thinking about that myself. Like, I have no business with a guy like Nick Henney when we were, you know, first going. Like, that dude should have just been like running through me. And, and he would, but like the fact that I could slow him down, the fact that I could defend myself in, in you know, a year's time, being able to, you know, move in a reasonably intelligent manner with a kid that had as much wrestling experience as he did, was fucking like really, it's amazing, the power of jujitsu, right? So like you go through these progressions, like from where you start day one to where you're at, the day that you get your blue belt is, it's a different world. Worlds apart. Worlds apart. Worlds apart, yeah. man. And so you get used to that, that level of progression and your expectations are set based on that level of progression. And then you hit blue belt and the progressions slow down. Like they're they're just not the same. We've talked about this all the time. Like you go through dips and valleys. Like as a white belt, you may have some dips here and there, but they're not going to be very long. It, it's almost a, a linear line up as a white belt. And it's not till you hit that your blue belt where you hit your first series dip where you feel like, holy shit, my jujitsu is actually getting worse. Like how is this happening? And again, that's where this whole the blue belt blues things comes from because it's usually people's first time with having to deal with that like. You know, I've set these unrealistic expectations. That's another thing I got here is like cutting back to a sustainable pace. That was a mistake I made early on was, dude, I was fucking putting 12 hours a week on the mat at one point. I mean, I was training all day, every day. I was coming home drilling with Bob. I mean, I joke around, man. I felt like, you know, Kevin put that blue belt around my waist and I walked off the mat and collapsed into a fucking pile of you know, just broken down body parts because I was so beat up and tired. But again, you're just so fucking jazzed on jujitsu and you just, I want to do it all the time. And man, the more I do, the better I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unsustainable. And so for me, I remember that was a big thing was having to be comfortable with cutting back. Like I felt like I was like being a bitch. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, I'm cutting back from six days a week to four. Like, and, and so, but that I had to do it to be sustainable. And so that's kind of another thing you see people who come in and they're just gung ho, man. They're like, you know, training five, six, seven days a week. And, and yeah, you can't do that. You, at some point you're going to have to cut back to a sustainable pace. And if you think that it's either this or nothing, you're going to end up quitting. Like you, it's going to be nothing then. So I don't know if you got like some. No, that you there's, on that, no, man. I think you explained it all perfectly. There's a lot. You said a lot of things, good things in there. You know, is it's got to be sustainable. If not, yeah, because you get. We've talked about that with like nutrition principles. You know, if someone accidentally screws up in one meal, okay, then they just throw that whole day out. Well, I'm just gonna eat like shit the rest of the day. Like, well, the whole weekend's fuck up. I'm just gonna eat like shit the whole weekend, or they, then they screw up on Monday. Well, I'm just gonna eat like shit the rest of the week. I'll get back to it. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it snowballs really fast. It, it doesn't have to be you know, training fucking eight days a week, <laughs> eight times a week, whatever, right, 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 like, yeah. or nothing. Yes. Like they're, they're, yeah. there's a middle road there. And, you know, we get it, man. We're, I guarantee you, well, most people listening to this aren't professional jujitsu athletes. No. You know what I mean? We're normal people with jobs and responsibilities and families. And 
hey, you got you to take that shit into account and you can't, maybe you don't get to train as much as you want. And so then you say, oh, I'm not, you, you're experiencing your first little dip or you're plateauing. And so instead of getting discouraged or thinking you got to ramp up your training to get past that plateau, but you don't have time to ramp up your training, well, that just means you got to train a little bit smarter. You know, you got to make some smarter choices. You know, I just realize it's a it's a fucking it's marathon, a dude. Man. It's a marathon. There's yes. no, it's a marathon with no finish line. Right. I hate yeah, that's the even worse part. Yeah, right. That's even worse part, dude. It, there, there is no yeah. end of the road, top of the mountain. You made it. Wrap it up. Put your gear away. Go home. Yeah. Not for me, anyways. There, there's no. No. The, the 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 end of the road for jujitsu is when I'm in my casket. Hopefully, you know what I mean. Like, hopefully, I can make it all the way to that day. Yeah. You know, or damn close. You know, like that's how there is no end result, right? You know, yeah, just constant. And yeah, like you touched on it's yeah, you, you get to blue belt and you're gonna have that is gonna be where you experience those lulls and those plateaus for the first time, and that's perfectly normal, yeah. And 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 then it's only because, like you said, at white belt, it's all linear, just kind of uphill. You're getting better, better because you're learning, you're learning what the shrimp is, you're, you're learning, you're, you're learning <laughs> yeah, elbow knee it's escape. It's impossible not and, to get better, right. and so but. <laughs> You start leveling out, and then you start dip, and then but from there, like your improvements, and the higher, the more advanced you get in the in the purple, brown, and black, like your improvements are so incremental, so little that they may even be hard to see. You may not be even, you might not be able to pick up on them, and you can't let that discourage you, yeah, yeah. because that that that's just the that's just the name of the game. Yeah, you don't get these big leaps anymore, man. No, it doesn't no, quite. It doesn't. You doesn't don't get these little dop- dopamine fixes anymore, yeah. man. Like you will, like when you were showing me something you came across last night, Roland. Like I could yeah. see the light in your eye. You were super excited, but it doesn't happen all the time. No, 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 no. You get these little glimpses, like oh, this worked. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure what I did, but this worked. Yeah, you know. So this. Yeah, but yes. Yeah, it's, yeah it's you got to understand that's the deal, man. That's, that's just the deal. that's the deal. It's part of the and I, but that came from. A dip, you know, like okay. frustration. I mean, I'd, I'd hit a fucking wall with uh, my mountain escapes with, with Kevin. And it was just the, you know, if you don't, it's the mindset that you create in that transition, like I was saying, between white belt and blue belt that allows you to continue to progress that way. Because that's what it is, man. At a certain point, like the only answers that you're going to find, like, like they're in you. Right. Like, that's why I keep saying, like, you know, when I ask for a technique, like the more important thing to me is not necessarily the technique that you're going to show me is what is your thinking? What do you see behind it? Because like that's like that's what you need to be able to sustain this journey for the long run. Right. It's like understanding how to look at jujitsu yourself, not going to people who see jujitsu better than you and constantly looking for an answer from them. And so and then that's how you come up with these things that work just for, you know, you, you're like, where the fuck did that come from? And it's like, man, if, if you're not looking for it, you know, if you're always looking to that, that external source, it's like, man, you got to believe that it's like, you know, in the Musashi you know, book of five rings, it says like, man, at some point you got to understand you are your own supreme master and you have to believe that. Like you, I like it in, in that book too, um, in the last chapter, uh, he, he talks about the concept of perfection which the way he explained it was really interesting and it's kind of backwards from the way most people think about it. Like most people think about trying to attain perfection as I have to add something, right? Like I've got, I've got to add something. I, I'm lacking something. So I need to find something from the outside, whether it's information or an experience or whatever it is. And I need, I need to add these things to me. And through adding these things, I'm going to attain or get closer and closer to perfection and the the way that he said it is like no like you're already perfect the way that you are you got to chip away the bullshit right so it's like the statue of david yeah 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 yeah. it's like that statue was always there it was always perfect inside that piece of marble they had to chip away the bullshit to find it it wasn't adding things to it it was getting away and that's that's the thing at a certain point you have to really embrace is like like I already have everything I need. I know what I need. I, like it's there on on some level, and it's uh, it's up to me to chip away the bullshit to find it. And it's such a different, more empowering mindset than 
I've got to find something outside of me to find it. And it's again, it's like, you know, you go from like being a white belt where it's all being fed to you to like, no man, you got to actually realize that you already have it inside of you. And now you need to figure out how to get it to come out. It's on you to figure that out. Man, yeah, that's that, that's the hardest thing, man. But that's the people that, I don't know, like those are the people I have the most fun talking to with about jujitsu is like, like that's how they're, I mean, I don't know how, they, you know, they, they, they come up with their own shit. You know what I mean? Like they're not just a library of techniques. It's like, this is what I do in this situation and this is why and this is how I think about it and, and stuff like that. So versus like, man, what do you do in this situation? Well, here's this technique. Okay. Well, why do you do that? That's just what I was shown when I was a blue belt and it worked really well. So I just keep using it. Okay. Well, that's great. But you know what I mean? That's not an interesting conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that's why I like trying to pick Pimenta's brain. I felt like I said, like, I felt like he's the Oracle of Delphi, man. If you yeah. can just ask him the right question, he will tell you yeah. the answer. He will tell you the meaning of the jujitsu universe. If you can just figure out the right question to ask him. So yeah, it's, it's having uh, those kind of conversations that I think are interesting. But, um, but anyways, yeah, it's a mindset that you got to have as part of developing during your blue belt period, I think. I would agree. It's t- it's a, that's a tough lesson to learn because it, it's a big mind shift or mindset shift. It, it, it really is. You're going into that, you're starting to get into adulthood, you know, so to speak. You know, it's, yeah, man. And it, it's, it's, everybody's going to go through it. Yeah. And to think that you're going to avoid it or, you're unique and that you're experienced in it. Nope. Nope. That nah. happens to everybody. Yeah. And it even it happens at all belts. You you get these you get promoted and you're like, Oh, I suck or you know, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't stop, man. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Dude. But that's the I don't know, like that's it's kinda like uh I don't know, when I lifted what well, nothing would drive me crazier than people who wanted to wear fucking like padded wrist things when they did kettlebell snatches. Oh, that fucking annoys the shit out of I'm me. I'm like, dude. this the kettlebell hitting your wrist is reality telling you that you're doing it wrong, motherfucker. Yeah. You know dude, what I mean? Dude, so dude, like, man, I so you you know, I, I coached CrossFit for a little while. But prior getting into coaching CrossFit, I you know, I went to a couple different kettlebell certifications like, you know, Steve Carter yeah. and, and you know even from the sports side, that uh, Valero Federinko or whatever the fuck his name was, big kettlebell sport guy. And man, if you do a really nice kettlebell snatch, man, that thing just folds around your hand. Oh yeah, it doesn't hurt at all. No. You can do hundreds of reps, and you're not gonna get. You might get a little bruise back here just from it resting on your forearm. Yeah, but you're not getting a slam. Right, slam. And I could not get CrossFitters to understand that. Like I, I would, I'd teach it till I was blue in the face, man. Like I'm like, hey, watch how I do this. I'm like I'll do it super slow. Right. Watch why, and I was showing them like you, you got to punch it here, blah blah blah. Like it folds around the outside. I, if you're having to wear padded forearm protectors to do your snatches, you're fucking up. You're fucking up, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah, man. Off you're something. fragilizing the you're system. Totally, totally. Yeah, I used to get so agitated with that, dude. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but it's you know that's the problem though. It's like reality is trying to tell you something. And you can either admit that like, yeah, I'm wrong and I need to change. Or you can be like, there's nothing wrong with me. Reality needs to fucking get it straight, yeah. right? That's what like putting a fucking wristband on your wrist is. It's like, no, I'm not wrong. Reality's wrong, fucking reality. And it's, I think it's kind of the same thing as in jujitsu, like, man, your, your plateaus and your dips are reality trying to tell you something. Like that's where the growth opportunities in your game come from are why have I stalled out? Because usually you're, you're, you know, something that was working isn't working anymore. Why? Okay. Do you need to try something else? You need to tighten it up. Uh, you keep falling into the same situation over and over and over again. Keep, people keep killing you with the same thing over and over. It's like, why? You know, that is, that's reality giving you an opportunity to improve your jujitsu game. That is not an opportunity for you to fucking feel sorry for yourself and get frustrated. That's easier though. That's so it, much it's easier. So much, so much easier, and it's easier to point to the external shit that like, oh, this isn't working anymore because of this, or like it's so much easier than figuring out what you can do differently. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it is. It's yeah. such an easier fallback to go that way. Yeah. But yeah, man, don't don't try to fragilize reality, man. Like if if you keep getting mounted, 
I mean, I, I joke with people, man. Like my my bow and arrow defense in in the gym is is uh, quasi legendary, <laughs> and uh, um, I joke with people. It's because, well, my job for the first year of jujitsu was to Getting get bow, bow and arrow. arrow choked, and I finally I was just I asked Kevin. I'm like, Kevin, what do I do? This keeps happening to me over and over and over again. He's like, Well, try this. It's like, Oh, okay. Well, there you go. That changed the thing, and so. But yeah, it was like, it was frustrating, but it's like, that was my opportunity to become good at something. So it's like, yeah, man, if you're not, I don't know, I don't know. Frustration, it's good if you if you channel it the it's right all, way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it, all on what you do with it. Yeah. If you quit like a bitch or you blame somebody else. If you channel it into self-pity yeah. and shit like that, then it's no good. But if you channel it into like the being fed up, Right, like I, I, it's like you know, you, you you're tolerating it, and eventually you're like, I'm fucking fed up. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm so fucking tired of getting bow and arrow choked. I am fucking fed up. I'm not taking it anymore. What the fuck do I do to fix it? And it's like if I never got frustrated, I'd never gotten to that point. So again, it's not that you don't want to get frustrated. It's that you can't let the frustration when go in a wrong direction and turn into self pity and and blaming other people and shit like that. So. Yeah. That's the that's the take home message, man. So, <laughs> what else you got there? Um, you know, we basically covered, you know, all the four reasons. You know, I'll just list them real quick. So I said, you achieved your goal, then you don't know what the next one is. You know, it's um, your expectations are more internal than external. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, it's your guidance. You know, like, what I mean by that is you're getting into that adolescence phase. You're gonna have a little less guidance now at Blue Belt. You got to really step up and it's your own your own journey we've talked about and then uh yeah your improvements are smaller and harder to see yeah and those were the, i think those are the to me those are the kind of like the four biggest reasons people just get super discouraged at blue belt and quit yeah so just still down to those four i know we had like long conversation about each one and but yeah, yeah. some other flares i had uh what I, have, I had one down here. Uh, higher belts go harder. You realize you weren't as good as you thought you were. Like, like that, I think too, that, that, that's I remember one. that was an epiphany for me that's Like when one. I started to realize like, oh, wait a minute. Like, like these motherfuckers got eight more gears that I didn't realize they had. Like they were just kind of fucking with me. So I think that fucks with people's heads sometimes. I, forget, I didn't even think about that. I yeah. forgot. I forget, that is because... When you're a white belt, and even when you're blue belt, like you don't realize, like you you don't know enough to realize when people are letting you do shit. Yeah, and you think you're doing good stuff, and you're not getting submitted or something. You no, know, it's strictly because it. A high, if a higher belt's good enough, most of, most of the time it's because they didn't want to. Yeah, they had something else. They're they were fucking around. On. They were fucking. Like, they were working on something else. Yeah, or just not yeah. paying attention because they're you know they were rightfully not really threatened by you, yeah. and you just caught them sleeping for half a second. Like yeah. I know fully, man. You know, yeah. yeah but I remember that like, <laughs> the first time. I gotta forget. I think I got something. I can't remember who it was, but I, I remember like hitting something on someone. I think it was like a butterfly sweep. And being like, oh, man, I'm fucking, this is great, man. This works great. And then I went to hit him on it the next time we rolled. And they just smashed right the fuck through it. Just like no problem. And I realized like, oh, they were fucking with me at that point. So, but anyway, <laughs> That's yeah, a discouraging man. thing. It, it, it is if you, again, but if you don't know it, right? And, and that is, man. I mean, we know it. Dude, people get that blue belt on, especially that first month after they got that blue belt. Like, you know, it, it, there's just an unspoken thing. Like. You need to understand where you are in the pecking order. We're going to make sure that you understand where you're at in the pecking order. Like you're going to get everybody's fucking A game for a little bit and it can be a really discouraging thing if you don't, you know, realize like, "Oh fuck. I wasn't as good as I thought I was." So, <laughs> like, "Oh man, blue belts and purple belts can submit me." Um <laughs> So that was one I I'd, I'd put down. Um I, I, uh, the other thing too is competing too much. This is just one of those, like, I think kind of the expectation thing that you were talking about, like, can can fall under that. Like, people get that blue belt and they're like, they're almost like, I'm going to ramp it up even more now. You know, like, you know, and and so they're like, I'm going to compete and I'm going to, you know, do this competition. I'm going to start doing these, you know, training more and blah, blah, blah. And they got the best of intentions and they're all fired up. And, but like you were saying, like, the bane of blue belts is getting injured. 
And you're way more likely to get fucking injured if you're competing a lot and you're training to compete a lot. And so, um, so anyway, it just kind of goes back to that, that expectations and keeping the sustainable thing in mind. But, um, yeah. realizing where those expectations come from. Yes. And I would be willing to bet most of the time it's not from your coach or your teammate. No. They have a certain amount of expectations on you, but if the, if you're trying hard, that's all that matters. You yeah. Know, that, that's all that matters. They see you showing up to practice and trying and taking notes. Like, no, you may not be the world champion, but, man, if you're trying, dude, your, your coach and your teammates are going to be so happy with you. You know, you're a yeah. good training partner to have. Maybe you're not as good as you think you should be, but that's you thinking that. Yeah. That's it's, it's all that is. Yeah, keep that's, those expectations. Yeah. Man, you know what? I'm surprised you haven't mentioned drilling in the notebook. It's for, well, we t- technically, I mean, like I, we, we've talked about the reasons and we've kind of thrown in solutions, ah. but I haven't even listed my solutions. Oh, yet. you got solutions. <laughs> yeah, I, wrote, I, I specifically wrote down reasons you get the Blue Belt Blues and then here's some solutions to combat those reasons. Excellent. So, yeah. Me too. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah. So what's, I mean, your, what's your solutions? Um, we've talked about a lot of them. I get, um, let me see. I just talked about it, the expectations. You know, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. Enjoy it, man. It's a journey. It's a, it's mar- a, journey, it's a marathon man. with no finish line. It, just enjoy it. Embrace the grind. There's going to be shitty times. There's going to be good times. Roll with it. Yeah. You know, so that was one. Um, Something you can do if you're getting a little stale or you don't know what your next goal is, if purple belt's too far too far away to think about, like, and, and this kind of falls into you know you having to make decisions for yourself. You're getting into the adolescence of jiu-jitsu is pick a position and just get obsessed with it. Like just go down that fucking rabbit hole. It'll give you something to focus on, and yeah. you're gonna see improvement. And I like just go down that rabbit hole to a fault. You know what I mean? Just like if you want to get really good at half guard or passing or something, like pick something and just that is your jujitsu world for now. Yeah. And it'll give you a focus. And you and if you're having trouble seeing improvements in other areas, if you laser in on one certain thing, like you, you're gonna make improvements on it. And then I think that'll help keep people motivated too. Yeah. So that was something I was in, and that falls into the drilling. You know, drill the shit out of something. Take notes. Drill something. Next time you're live rolling, try it. It didn't work. Write it down. Next time you get to drill, drill what didn't work. Boom. Wrestle again. Oh, it worked. And just make that. Your, and that, that's a cool process to go through. Yeah. And I think that, that squashes a lot of getting discouraged because yeah. you're not getting better. No, and for sure, man. If you don't understand that pro- that like that process of how to be a good learner, yeah. again, I, I totally agree. That's where, because we've talked about this before. How people get bored, yep, and they don't know how to deal with the boredom, and the, the boredom is just actually a sign that you need to start. Fo- you know, the the, the the shiny newness is worn off, so the really obvious things that keep your brain occupied and entertained are gone. So now it's up to you to dig in deep and find those things that keep your brain occupied and going. Because man, you and I are the same way, man. We can spend five minutes drilling a goddamn detail okay. and just geeking out on it and just. It's like I don't understand how people are bored. I, I don't. I don't. It's like, dude. There's. I, I think about. It, there's just not enough fucking time in the day to drill everything and all the positions and all the things that I know that I need to be working on and all the details of them. So, but yeah, knowing how to be a good learner, man, I think is will help combat a lot of the stuff, which is what you're, you know, basically saying. Yeah, there. that's that's really what it is. Is if you learn how to be a good learner, it'll take care of a lot of these problems but and that's what i mean by picking a certain position getting obsessed with it and you're a great example of it like did you get obsessed with shit and, <laughs> and it's good i mean it, but again that falls into the you know your greatest strength is your greatest weakness you'll get obsessed with it to a fault right you know but that's good because then you get really fucking good at something and then you can just shift a little bit yeah like you get you narrow it down you get okay like that edge of the sword is pretty sharp so now let's start sharpening the other side you yeah. know but so but it keeps you going, you know what I'm saying? Because you're just like, yeah, like you just, you see it. You'll get a little discouraged, but then you'll find a solution. Then you just go further down the rabbit hole. Then you'll see it, you know, like, yeah. that. it's a cool process, man. It is. It's fun, It's, it's a never-ending puzzle, dude. Yeah, it's, it's another one of our superpowers, yeah. man. We're like, manipulate the future through yeah. what we're doing today. Yeah. You know, like future self, we'll figure this out if, if my today self has the right attitude and does the right things. And if you just have faith in that fucking process, man... It'll just, it'll reaffirm itself to you just over and over and over again. Just that blind faith that, fuck, nothing, time and focus, like nothing, 
can beat that. There's no man. substitute for that. No. There's, uh-huh. no, there's no cheat. There's no hack. No. There's time and focus. Time and focus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, there's no hack to that. There's man. no hack to that. No. Man. Yeah, no. and, then, and then the last thing I had, the solution is, you know, finding finding a higher rank in your academy that you can really become friends with and ask them these questions and, and finding somebody that's driven, you know, like not motivated, but just like driven and obsessed. Like there's going to be a couple of those guys in your academy. Yeah. And pick their brain, man. Whether you end up being real good friends with them or not, that's a different situation, but they're there. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, if they're, if someone's made it to purple, brown, and black, you know those higher levels. Like they got they got some obsession qualities and they're, and they're running <laughs> running through their DNA, man. Yeah, they, you just don't get that far without it. Yeah, and especially I would have to say like brown and black. Like you just you're not getting to those no. unless you're wired a little bit different. Yeah, and so pick those guys' brains, man. And a lot of them, like you know, more than happy to talk about more it. More than happy to talk about it. You know, someone comes to me and starts asking me deeper questions like that, dude. I'm all about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah you know, that's I'll talk about that shit forever. Obviously, we got a fucking podcast. About yeah, it. but yeah, I think that's a big one too. Is yeah, no, yeah. I've got that down here. Yeah, like pick higher belts, brains, man. Like pick the make, brains. Yeah. yeah, make use of them. The other thing too is you know investing in privates. I mean, when you have an opportunity to. Uh, you know, train with someone like, you know, when Pimenta's in town, like Jesus Christ, like how do you not take advantage of that guy's, I mean, I'm, I'm so pumped that dude, every time I see that dude, he changes my jujitsu world. It's like the cheapest freaking 75 bucks, you know, me and Kelly split one. It's like, that's like the best investment you can make. And, but again, like it's, you come into those things and you have some questions, like you need to know, like, what am I trying to work on that's what that's the power of privates is you get that one-on-one that individual like okay here's what i need to work on um help me do that what what do i need to do and they're so valuable that way uh so yeah but but you know if investing in privates isn't something you're not something you're gonna do all the time yeah picking higher belts brains is big time because i mean you and i are this totally the same someone comes up and asks us a question it's like fuck i'll be happy to talk about someone to someone else i'm always talking to myself in my own head about this stuff so yeah i'll talk to someone else about it here let me show you this and uh but yeah man take advantage of them because and then two because we've been through it i mean i man i can't even tell you how many times you told me when i i remember getting my blue belt and you were all right man you just need to know the plateaus are coming. They're coming. And and I remember thinking like, ah, you know, eh, I'm sure they will, but they won't be the same for me. You, you just, cause mm-hmm. you're, you're in like the, the, the moment. It's like, you've never, I, even though I knew that that was hubris and that wasn't, it's hard not to think that way. But I totally remember you coming up and telling me that and like several times, man, just being like, dude, just it's part of the process. You're going to hit these, these lulls and you just got to stick with it and stuff. So, but you know, so you've been through it, right? And so being able to just kind of pick your brain and just get some advice on like how how do I kind of get through this, you know, these problems and and uh, um, yeah, man, most people are more than happy. That's the cool thing with jujitsu is by the time you get to be a higher belt, it's usually weeded out the dicks. So most of the guys there are pretty cool and they'll they'll be happy to help you out. And they've so. been and they've been through it and they know where you're at. Yeah, yeah. So exactly that, that that's a big part is you, you know you're not an island like you, you're not the only blue belts ever experienced this shit like no it, dude like i don't man i look back at my blue belt days like i do i don't know just pure stubbornness and love of jujitsu like just got me through it because i mean i've told the story before you know i moved out here to colorado and i was a two-stripe blue belt dude i straight up didn't have a coach and dude i stay and i so i'm going through these blue belt blues unguided and like i when i moved here to this town no one trained in a gi and so i started teaching in a gi and it was just i had some good wrestlers and some guys that had some jiu-jitsu experience and then so i spent like two years doing that straight up with no coach man going through blue blow and then i finally started driving to denver once a month twice a month you know 500 miles you know round trip just pursuing it just i it was it was a struggle dude and looking back like I, I see people like we have such a good good academy with good training partners and good coach. Fifteen minutes away. <laughs> Fifteen minutes away, and motherfuckers are quitting because they're discouraged. And that, that's I think that's where I get a little calloused. It's like you motherfuckers, no, man. Yeah, I was man. driving back and forth in snowstorms. I remember one time I went to Murdoch's, the Farm and Fleet store, 
when I got out of work on Thursday to buy tire chains because there was a snowstorm and I still was going to Denver to fucking train. And I remember my old lady be like, are you really going to drive in that storm? I was like, yeah, I got fucking tire chains. I'm going to train. <laughs> and that's the mindset I had. Yeah. She's like, you're not right. I'm like, I know. So fucking, I'll yeah. see you. I'll see you Sunday night. Yep. And yeah, that I mean, that's the focus I had. Like, I wasn't... There wasn't a fucking snowstorm that was stopping me. I fucking... I can buy tire chains. I can get through the storm. I'm out. Yeah. You know, like... And then when you got a school 10 minutes away and you're fucking upset because you don't... You don't... You haven't got that purple belt yet. Fuck yeah, off. I fucking know, shut man. up and train, man. I know, man. <laughs> shut up and train. Shut up and train, man. I know. I, I, I know. I get callous. I shouldn't... But again... Grumpy guy, BJ. Nah, yeah, I guess I'm living up to the well, grumpy side. You, you got. I, I mean, you're. <laughs> it's funny. You're. You can definitely uh, have a little bit harder attitude about it than most people. Because yeah, did you fucking you suffered for your jujitsu on like way more levels than most people do. You know, like like you said, dude, having to go out of your way to drive all that way and just keep the training up and go find training partners in town and talk people into putting on a fucking gi and just all the shit that you had to do to keep oh, it going, I had to, man. Yeah, the people didn't know what a gi was. I had to show them where to buy gis and like, hey, what, what's a gi? Like, fuck, dude, no, yeah, no one, hey, well, yeah, it was a whole fucking process, man. Yeah, so, I mean, you've done that. So, like I said, it's I, it, that's, I can see why you would be a little grumpier about it I mean, that's <laughs> you know yeah i mean i'm that way with mountain biking man i came up in time when we just you know fucking went out and hucked ourselves off everything and bounced and went back and did it again and i look at people now and they're just like oh, i don't want to fall down and scrape my elbow and it's like dude you guys what is wrong with you motherfuckers sacrifice so many body parts to the mountain biking gods and some of them multiple times and you're gonna bitch you know what i mean like so now i i know man people yeah i don't, I don't get I, I think man you know <laughs> Just talking about it is making me think about it, you know. Maybe that's why I get so discouraged when I see people quit. I, 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 discouraged is the word, but I do. I get angry, man. It's just because I know the benefit they're, they're pissing away. Like, you've put in the time and effort to get to Blue Belt. And it's hard, man. It's hard work. Like, it's not an easy thing. It's it's not like these kids' Taekwondo classes where they fucking hand out black belts to eight-year-olds. Yeah. It's not that. And it's hard, like any, like it's an achievement to get to blue belt. And each belt, you know, it's it's a like you've earned it, you know. That for, in most schools, you know, yeah, there's those stupid fucking schools that promote strictly on attendance, you know. But most do ninety nine percent of jujitsu schools aren't like that. Yeah. The real Brazilian jujitsu schools not. They don't care how many classes you show up to. You know, it's you can show up to fucking five hundred of them in a month doesn't mean you're getting your next belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it's not... You've earned it. And just to quit... I don't know. That's frustrating to me. Yeah. I yeah, do. yeah, man. Part of it... Take, I take it a little personal, too. You know? It just... Maybe I shouldn't because... I take it personal because you invest time into you somebody. invest time and energy into people. And that, you, like, yeah. You, you invest time and energy yeah. into them and you're trying to help them grow and be better and then they just come up with bullshit reasons to quit. Yeah. Like, again, I understand if life gets in the way... But that's so few and far between. No, it is. It, man. It, most of the time, people quit it's just fucking bitching out. Yep. Just, yeah, I know, man. Yeah, it's it, you, you invest that time and energy into them. That is, I'll say th- those are the ones that annoy me the most. Like the guys and gals that I'm like, you know, yeah, man, you know, I saw something in them, in, you know, white belt and investing time and energy into them, and and they're coming along, and all of a sudden it's just like, dude, where the hell are you? Like, why'd you quit? And it's always just some bullshit excuse, and it's like, man, it's, yeah, 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 that annoys the shit out of me, too. And I, I know it shouldn't. I need to be a bigger person, so to speak, and not get agitated by it, but god damn it. Yeah. You can't help but not. Yeah. Well, man, I can't think the thing is, is like, it's realizing, I, I think kind of the attitude we've tried to take with this is a little bit beyond, like, just fucking deal with it, and okay, it may not be your fault. One, like, realize you're not the only person who feels this way, and two, it may not be your fault. Right, like today's society and school and things like that, like they don't set you up with the mental tools that you need to to get through this period. You know what I mean? Like understanding how to view things and not blame other people and how to be a good learner and just you know, a lot of the things that we've talked about, like they're not necessarily things that you get taught and and so, you know, just fuck man. I think a lot of people if they they had the right tools they'd make use of them 
but they just don't. And so that's kind of the point of the podcast, right? Yeah. Like we give, just keep trying to give tools. people some tools, man. Yeah. If we can save one person from quitting and change their mindsets, and so if they see the journey through, man, then like we've more than done our job. Yep. So, but uh, yeah, man. So hopefully that helps some people out. Hope so. So don't quit. It's just it's a struggle, man. Yeah. It it's, is. But it's so much fun. It's, it's dude. God, it's, man. Dude, any, there, anything worth doing has got a bunch of struggle. That comes along with it. But the struggle is it. Like, like, we that that is early, the thing, man, dude. The, the struggle is the trying thing. Trying to avoid the struggle is impossible. And no. Yeah, so just embrace it, man. Go fucking face the dragon head Fa- on. Yeah, face that dragon head That's on. That's right. He's, he's not going to go away. So nope. just go face him on your own terms yeah. and come back with the gold. Tell us what you found out. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it. That's a good place to end it right there. Oh, yeah, man, for sure. So... All right, cool. Well, uh, we're going to wrap up this episode. Um, again, all the usual stuff. You guys can hit us up at grumpyguybjj at gmail.com if you got any questions or comments. And again, as you see, we will uh, answer your questions on the air. Um, and uh, you'll find us in Podbean, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, all those, all your usual Everywhere. podcast suspects. Um and yeah, oh yeah, and grumpyguybjj.com, our new website. Check it out, and you can sign up for our free BJJ Improvement Starter Kit. We've got a couple uh, workshops that we film that you can uh, download, and a workout, and some top 10 BJJ mistakes, and what to do instead. So uh, yeah, just trying to help people out every way we can with that. And I think that's about it, man. I forget anything. No, I think that's it. I Check out the website; it's cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm pumped. yeah. Our new website. It turned out pretty, pretty good, good, man. We're and, and it's super easy to sign up there too. Yep. You know, and yep. Then you get the that way you get the newsletter every week and yeah, all that cool shit. So keep you up to date with stuff. So, all right, guys. Well, that's about it. We don't have uh, jujitsu this afternoon, but I do have some carrot cake. I got to eat at my little girl's birthday here Ooh. in a little bit. I know Uncle Rob might. I have to hang out and try peace. That's a tough decision for me to make. Today's March 1st, and I was going to start my March Meat Madness Month and try to uh, eat nothing but meat all month. That's why I asked you this morning <laughs> when I was making eggs. I was like, do, do eggs count as meat? And I was like, no, they got to develop I'll, a little bit I'll more. eat eggs. Like I, I was, I'm serious. Like Today's number one. I had half-assed mentioned this, that I was going to try to do the March Meat Madness, just do the carnivore diet. Like, yeah. I'll throw in eggs. But if I eat carrot cake on day one, I don't know how I feel about myself. This is a fucking <sighs> All right. a, a moral object. But I don't want to be disrespectful to. I don't know that I can. Shadow's birthday or not? Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. cross that bridge when we come to. It. <laughs> right. We'll see how where, how you feel when the carrot cake comes out. <laughs> Still so. life's big decisions, man. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we will leave on that suspenseful note, and we will let you know what Rob decides. Carrot on cake or no carrot cake. The next episode of Grumpy Guy BJJ Podcast. So right, right on, guys. We'll talk to everybody later. Peace.